Good evening, everybody, from Dodger Stadium, where tonight the Dodgers take on the San Francisco Giants in the second of the vital four-game weekend series here in Los Angeles. The Dodgers tonight will be out to match their longest winning string of the year as they try to hang another defeat on the Giants and run their current winning string to seven. The Giants, on the other hand, a loser here last night in the opening game of the series 12-2, have now dropped four of their past five decisions. Tonight, Bert Hooten, who's had notable success against San Francisco in recent years, will pitch for the Dodgers. Hooten 12-8 and eight overall against the league this year. He's 3-0 and oh against the Giants, and he has beaten the Giants in his last five decisions. In fact, in his last six starts against them, Bert's ERA has been about an even one. Hooten 9-5 and five lifetime against San Francisco. His opponent tonight will be 6-7 right-hander Ed Halicki, who's won... This year, five times and dropped six others. Halicki was out for a while because of injury. He pitched a fine ball game against the Dodgers in San Francisco last weekend, but Bob Welch beat him on Saturday afternoon 2 to nothing. So Halicki is 0-1 against the Dodgers this year. He was 3-3 and against them last year. He's 8-5 and against them in his career. Halicki tonight will be looking for his first victory since July the 16th. The Dodgers last night had quite an offensive attack. Two four-run innings, a 16-hit total and the 12-2 win. Reggie Smith led the way with four hits and five runs batted in, and the victory went to young Bob Welch, who now has run his record to 4-0. Bob will be our guest, and Jerry will be talking with him right after this. When you're in a hungry mood, to add your look and pour some food. Put it on for a treat, you smile on your face. When you want a special treat, you can make your day complete. Put it on for a treat, you smile on your face. He can make it tasty. He can make it crunchy. When you're feeling hungry, you can get it quickly. When you're in a hungry mood. in today and register to win Singer Stylus 534 sewing machine. It does the thing zigzag stitch plus blind hem stitching. It has a free arm for making cuffs easy to do and has four flexi stitch patterns. In addition, you'll win a $25 gift certificate for fabric to start you on your way for your new fall wardrobe. Bob in today at all Arthur Treacher's Fish and Chips. No purchase necessary. Put it on the well, Bob, things seemed to go along pretty well for you last night against the Giants. Well, I was very happy. I got 12 runs. One thing, Jerry, is you, you can't ask for anything more than that. But I was happy the way I pitched. I uh, gave up a home run early, but we came right back and scored three runs. And from there on, you know, it was all the way to bat. After the home run by Jack Clark, it seemed like it didn't bother you. They just kept running and tended to your business. Well, you know, I figured if they were going to beat us one to nothing, then, you know, Vita Blue was going to have to do a heck of a job stopping our bats. Plus, we haven't come to the play yet, and we had nine more cracks to come up to the plate and score runs, so I just went, went out and went after him the best I possibly could to hold him to one run. Bob, did, uh, that was the first home run you'd given up. It didn't bother you? No, he hit it pretty good. You know, I didn't get a chance to see it. By the time I turned around, that baby was in the stand. No, it, it can't bother me, Jerry. To tell you the truth, you know, top of the first, you know, they score one run. You know, if I let that bother me, then, you know, I just ruined my whole game plan. How about the rest of the game? Did your stuff stay with you all the way? Yeah, I had good stuff at the end of the game. I had a lot of rest between innings. That's the thing that sometimes may backfire on you, but I was I had a lot of base running last night, and it was quite human, and I changed my shirt a couple times, but uh, outside of that, you know, I felt strong in the later innings, but they just decided to make a move and let Charlie Huff get a work. Do you feel that sometimes in a ball game when it's lopsided like that, you might get careless and kind of let down? Yeah, I was speaking with Doug Rowe, and Doug Rowe told me now is probably the toughest part, you know, pitching baseball when you got a 10-run lead and it's, uh, you know, in the fifth inning or the fourth inning, and you have to go out and, and make you, your first pitch, he said, to concentrate more on you know, than any other pitch in the game is go out and get ahead of the hitter. So I just used that theory and went after him the rest of the way, and it paid off. Yeah, because you, you get out there and get a little lackadaisical and say, well, here it is, I don't have to worry about it. How, well, it doesn't happen too many times though you get that kind of a lead, does it? No, very seldom. I, I think this is the best I've seen Dodgers swing the bat since I've been up here. I even got a hit, so you know how good things are going last night. Well, you look like you're a pretty good hitter. You've got uh, three now, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I swing the bat. Last night, I, was, I picked out a location for Vita Blue Fastball and swing in that area, and it, and it showed up and hit the bat. Bob, what about getting ready for a ball game against the Giants and against one of the better pitchers in the game, Vita Blue? You knew for four or five days you're going to pitch against Vita. Did you have any sleepless nights or worry about it any? No, I, I think I went at the same way I have so far at all my teams. You know, I've, I've got my rest, and I've uh, played close 
stuff like calls attention to, you know, the game situations when other pitchers have been pitching and watching themselves, like Don Sutton and Doug Rowe. So we have some excellent pitchers where you can learn and pick up a few tips. And I've kept my ears open, you know, but I, I just went after him basically the way I did in San Francisco and the way I've been all the time so far, just going out after him and keep trying to keep the ball down low and throw strikes. Bob, uh, well, uh, just a little year ago, you are pitching in San Antonio. Then you graduated to El Paso, uh, to, uh, to Albuquerque, and all of a sudden you're in the big leagues. So your jump has been rather quick. Yeah, I think, you know, it was a little bit quicker than I expected. I expected I was not going to stay down. In, I, I felt that I was going to be in Albuquerque, you know, maybe until the Dodgers can bring up and make it a 40-man roster when they can add additional players. So I just, you know, didn't keep in mind that, you know, maybe someday I'd be called up. I just went out and tried to pitch the best I possibly could in Albuquerque. You know, it's in mind that maybe sometime I'll get a chance to pitch up in Dodger Stadium. Is it harder to pitch in Albuquerque than it is in the big league? Uh, right now it seems like it is. <laughs> I'm sure as the years go on, it would be a little bit difficult. I think the only different situation here is... Uh, you know, in Albuquerque, you get a lot of fly balls that, that tend to go out. But otherwise, you know, there's, there's a lot better hitters up here, and you have to pitch a little bit better. Back to the spring training and the fact that you've had a chance to work some and against big league hitters. That's good schooling. Right. I believe that helped me out more than anything, getting a chance to go to spring training when I didn't think I was going to get a chance to pitch with the big club. And I went to spring training, and boom, the first time I went on a road trip, they put me in a ball game. And, you know, from there on out, I followed Don Sutton and... and things sort of looked for the better, you know, and time came on, I pitched in Albuquerque, and now I'm here in Dodger Stadium. Your first start in Cincinnati, you recall that? Were you nervous in that one? Yeah, I think I've been nervous quite a few times up there on the mound, but I try to keep it, you know, within myself, and, and you know, I show my emotions, but I, I try to keep it, you know, around the plate instead of out, out in the crowd. Bob, they say one of the things that uh, adds to your success is the fact that you have good control. Has that been so all of your baseball career? Yeah, I think, Jerry, I've never really had a problem with my control. You know, I'm grateful to somebody. Maybe it's uh, just my own workings or something of that nature, but I've, I've had concentration. And ever since, you know, in college or in high school, I've never really had a difficulty with control problem. You know, thank God or somebody. Thank, you know, whoever helped me. You know, I love it. Just uh, as you have a good live arm, uh, control is just part of it then. Yeah, I believe, you know, the rhythm part, you know, I've been, I've been working on my rhythm and concentration as part of the game, I think that, you know, I have to go out and concentrate to throw strikes, and, and you'll throw strikes, and you start losing your concentration, you know, you get behind. The only time when I walk people, you know, I just get totally away from my game plan and totally away from my rhythm, you know, and end up throwing balls. Everybody has a weakness. Do you have one? Yeah, I got a weakness. I can't feel the ground ball up the middle, and I can't run up. <laughs> I can't step on first base. <laughs> you missed first base the other night, rounding the bases in San Francisco, didn't you? Yeah, I tried to, I don't know how I can miss. I got a size 12 shoe, and, you know, I seem, I should be able to hit it. But, uh, you know, I think that's the problem I've got to have. And, you know, I think my breaking stuff, and I have to learn to get more consistency in getting people out with my curveball. Bob, thanks for the visit. Appreciate it. Thank you, Jerry. Bobby Welch has been our guest. Stay tuned for exciting Dodger baseball, the Dodgers and the Giants. Let's go! Batter up! It's a beautiful day for a ball game! For a ball game! everyone, this is Jerry Doggett along with Vince Scully and Ross Porter. And here we are at beautiful Dodger Stadium for tonight's game between the Dodgers and the San Francisco Giants. Well, it's game two of the series and the whole town's talking about last night's win when the Dodgers covered the Giants 12-2 and they beat Vida Blue behind the strong pitching of young Bobby Welch. Bobby with a five-hitter gave up two home runs to Jackie Clark and to Bill Madlock. The Dodgers in winning last night have pulled into a tie with the Giants for first place, and the Reds, who are playing in uh, San Diego, are a half a game up. The Dodgers have the identical mark of 67 and 48, and the Reds are 66 and 48, and we've got a great race going. Another sellout crowd for the ball game this evening, so the Dodgers well over the two million mark and rolling along, and tomorrow night's game will also be a sellout and also Sunday afternoon. Tomorrow night's game, of course, will be preceded by the Hollywood Stars night. And for those of you who do have the tickets, be sure and get out early. The pregame ceremonies begin at 6.30. And then the Hollywood Stars game will be on a few moments later. Here are the batting orders for the game now. For the Giants, leading off and playing second base will be Bill Madlock. Jim Dwyer gets the nod in center field, batting second. Jackie Clark will be the right fielder for San Francisco. Willie McCovey in the lineup tonight, playing at first base. McCovey. 
Darrell Evans will be the third baseman batting in the number five spot. Terry Whitfield will be at in left field batting sixth. And Roger Metzger will be the shortstop. The catcher is John Tamargo. Tamargo to do the catching. And big Ed Halicki warming up down in the giant bullpen will be the pitcher. For the Dodgers, the batting order. Davey Lopes at second base. Bill North in center field. Reggie Smith in right. Ron Say at third. Steve Garvey at first base. Dusty Baker in left field. Johnny Oates to do the catching tonight. Bill Russell will be a shortstop. And Bert Hooten will be doing the pitching. The umpires for the game tonight will be Paul Rungi at the plate. Andy Olson at first. Jerry Dale at second. And John McSherry will be the third base umpire. Here at Dodger Stadium now on J.C. Penny night. The family night will be celebrated as Marlene Smith from J.C. Penny will sing for us our national anthem accompanied by Helen Dell at the Dodger Stadium Con Organ. Dodger Stadium following this message. How fresh is fresh? The fresh bread in our markets is just that, fresh, but some is fresher. Likewise, the fresh eggs and fresh dairy products. Then there's the fresh eastern corn-fed pork in the meat departments of our Southern California food stores. Just how fresh is it? Well, with one exception, just one, all this pork is dressed back east. The one exception, of course, is Farmer John fresh pork, which can rightfully be called the fresher fresh pork. For Farmer John, as you're often reminded, will continue to be, is the only packer to bring the porkers out here live. Live, not frozen or in cold storage. And dress the meat fresh right in the Southland. Which means, and nobody can deny this, that only Farmer John provides Southern California stores with eastern pork as fresh as that sold in all the tall corn states. Farmer John fresh pork. The fresher fresh pork, strictly fresh. The only fresh pork ever to win a gold medal at the California State Fair. Always ask for it by name. The Dodgers go out defensively now. Johnny Oates behind the plate. Bert Hooten on the mound. Garvey at first. Lopes at second. Russell at short. Say is the third. Baker in left field. North in center. And Reggie Smith around and right. The fans still coming in. And we're going to have a full house here for the ball game here this evening. Second game of the series. The Dodgers now on the year have taken a one-up lead on the Giants, and they won last night 12 to 5, slugging 16 hits against San Francisco. So Bert Hooten, who pitched so well against the Giants every time out this year, will try to make it one more, and he might get another chance later on in the season when the Dodgers and the Giants meet for the last couple of times here and in San Francisco. Two games here and two games up there will conclude the activities in September. 
We'll keep you posted on the happenings in San Diego. It's nothing, nothing, and they're in the third inning now. And the Reds have gone out in the third. So the Padres coming to bat. Ochinko against Bill Bonham down there. Beautiful evening for the ball game. Sure hope you'll be with us tomorrow night for the Hollywood Stars game preceding our regular game. Okay, we're all set. Time to play ball. The Dodgers and the Giants. Game two. And now for the play-by-play, here's Vin Scully. Vinny. Thank you, Jerry. Hi, everybody, and a very pleasant good evening to you, wherever you may be. It's the second battle of the war that is called the Giant-Dodgers series. Bill Madlock, followed by Jim Dwyer, and then Jack Clark. Bert Hooten, who has been brilliant, He's won five straight against the Giants, five out of six against the league. In fact, his only loss, one to nothing in San Diego. And he puts it on the line now as Bill Madlock steps in, hitting 312. He takes a slider for a strike. 0 and 1. One thing in the early outset, no matter the score, no matter how lopsided or otherwise, everybody must remember August the 11th. And the next one, a strike. 0 and 2. But as always is the case, when the Giants and Dodgers get together, tonight is the night. The strike two pitch to Matlock is low and outside, ball one. Paul Rungi, the plate umpire, Andy Olson at first, Jerry Dale at second, John McSherry at third. Burt's one-two pitch on the way is hit into left field, base hit. So Bill Matlock got an inside fastball, didn't hit it hard, more off the handle, but he was strong enough to nudge it. And that'll bring up Jim Dwyer. Of course, for Madlock to get base hits against the Dodgers is certainly not news. Lifetime, he's hitting 350 against them. Here's Jim Dwyer, the left-hand hitter, so they spell Larry Herndon. Herndon went hitless last night. When Bert Hooten pitched, Herndon went 0 for 4 up at Candlestick. So they get the extra left-handed bat in there and Dwyer and the pitch outside, ball one. Jim Dwyer, he's been with the Cardinals twice, also with Montreal, and he's hitting 224. On deck is the phenom, Jack Clark, the all-star right fielder. Now the 1-0 pitch on the way. Hooten ready, Bert delivers very high, ball two, two and oh. So Dwyer backs out, has a look at Davey Bristol coaching at third. Peanuts, Jimmy Davenport coaching at first. 2 0. Putin, right foot on the rubber, looks down to Johnny Oates. Madlock off the bag at first, has stolen a dozen bases. There he goes, and the pitch is promptly whacked into right field. Now Madlock, without stopping, easily goes to third. And Hooten is in a jam at the outset. First and third, nobody out. Now, here comes the trouble. Jack Clark, who is second to George Forster in RBIs. He's third in the league in doubles. And he just brings up all kinds of impressive credentials, along with a 300 batting average. Clark with 19 home runs, 81 runs batted in. First and third, nobody out first inning. Clark, right-hand hitter waiting. Hooten out of a stretch, infield is back, and the fastball is high, ball one. We have not seen the great curveball that Hooten had at Candlestick. He said after that game it was the best curve he had in his life, and it sure looked it. One and oh, the count to Clark. Now the one oh pitch on the way to Jack, and that's inside, ball two. Clark at one time thought he was going to make the big leagues as a pitcher. Then he was convinced he'd be the third baseman for the Giants until they got Kenny Reitz. So finally, he set his sights in the outfield, and in a year and a half, he's an all-star. 2-0 to Jack. Matlock down the line from third, Dwyer away from first. The 2-0 pitch to Clark, breaking ball for a strike. 2-1. The Dodgers have done well against the Giants and against the league here at home. They won 9 of 13 from San Francisco here and a dozen out of 14 against the league. The 2-1 pitch to Jack Clark. Hooten delivers, swung on and missed. Fastball inside about at the knees. 2-2. Two and two. On deck, Willie McCovey. 
Nobody out first inning. Giants at first and third. Putin out of a stretch. Checks the runners. And the 2-2 pitch is whacked foul off the facade of the second deck going to the box seats in the lower deck. Two and two to Jack Clark. Clark is from Azusa. Gladstone High. Great all-around athlete there. But even the Giants are surprised at how quickly he has reached all-star status. And he certainly deserves it. Got all kinds of ability. A little terrifying to realize he's just starting out. Terrifying if you're an opposing pitcher. 2-2 pitch to Jack Clark. Is in the dirt. Goes behind Oates. And down to second base goes Dwyer. So Gianni Oates trying to block a wild pitch. Succeeded in blocking it, but that's all. Now 3-2 and two with first base open. Nobody out. And Willie McCovey waiting his turn. So a rather wobbly start by Bert Hooten. So Vida Blue came in here with all kinds of great pass performances, and he was shelled. And now here comes Hooten, winner of five straight, five of his last six, and he's in trouble. Clark waiting. Bert now will go out of a windup, and the 3-2 pitch is fouled away. Tomorrow night, Tommy John will go after his 14. He's 13 and 8. Rob Nepper is 11 and 9. And then Sunday, Don Sutton, 12 and 9, against John Montefusco, 9 and 4. Bert staring into Johnny Oates, and Clark, tired of waiting, backs out. Into three innings in San Diego, no score. Putin looks at Madlock into the windup. 3 2 pitch is low, and that loads him up. Nobody out, and Willie McCovey coming up. You could take an hour to talk about Willie McCovey and home runs against the Dodgers. He is at 504 in his great career. He has hit 45 home runs against the Dodgers and 17 of those home runs right here at Dodger Stadium. And although he is hitting only 100 against the Dodgers this year, he still has eight runs batted in. So Hooten is in trouble and the pitch to McCovey is swung on and missed. He tried to golf a low pitch, 0-1. McCovey at 40 years old has three hits and 30 at-bats, but as we said, eight RBIs. He has more RBIs than any other giant against the Dodgers. The next one is fouled back, so Hooten has him in a jam, 0-2. Jack Clark at first, Jim Dwyer at second, Bill Madlock at third. Down in the Dodger bullpen, Lance Rotson begins to warm up. The strike two pitch to McCovey is popped in the air, and I mean up into the soup. Russell looking up into that gray sky. The infield fly rule is called, and he has it. One away. So McCovey pops it up, and now another terror coming up, Darrell Evans. Evans is hitting 258 against the league. Almost 100 points higher than that against the Dodgers. In the last two years, he's hit 364 against the Dodgers, and he has 24 lifetime home runs. Darrell gets up to the plate and now turns and goes to the on deck circle. So, time out. Evans, despite that 258 mark, is right up there with the leaders in walks, 78 of them. That would be more than any other Giant, and it would also be more than any other Dodgers. And he is right there in the leaders with runs scored at 64. So Darrell, a very valuable member of the Giant Ball Club. Putin delivers, fastball fouled away, 0-1. Putin has faced the Giants three times this year and won them all. And in each game, he's allowed one run. One of the three games, he went the distance. The other two, he got into the seventh with two out and had to come out. Strike one pitch to Darrell Evans. Hop foul off third. No play per se. He's coming over, but it's back in five rows. 0-2. Oh 
So with the bases loaded and nobody out, Willie McCovey popped up. Now the count 0-2 on Darrell Evans. And another talented left-hand batter, Terry Whitfield, on deck. One away. Bird, a long look at Johnny Oates. Now into the windup, and the strike two pitch to Darrell Evans. Low, he threw that knuckle curve, almost in the dirt. A good save by Johnny Oates. One and two. Rungi, Olson, Dale, and McSherry, the umpires. Putin trying to get out of a mess here in the first inning. One and two to Darrell Evans. Bird ready, delivers, and it's outside. Ball two. Madlock at third. Dwyer at second. Clark at first. One away. Johnny Oates wigwagging a couple of signs out. Burt takes a long look. Madlock bluffing down the line. The 2-2 pitch to Darrell Evans. High. And so he's gone as far as he can go. A full count. Bases loaded. One out. What a way to start the night. As we told you, Darrell Evans leading the Giants in walk. So he has a good eye. Three and two. Hooten ready, and the pitch to Evans is swung on and fouled away out of play. Hooten got the ball down around the knees, inside part of the plate. So it's still three and two. Burt with a new ball to work with. Dal Evans waiting. Hooten to the windup, and the three-two pitch on the way is driven to deep right field. Back goes Reggie Smith on the track, and he will catch it at the wall. Madlock scores, Dwyer to third. One to nothing, Giants. Boy, Evan sure gave it a ride. He came within a couple of feet of popping it out. So it is one to nothing, Giants. Runners at first and third. And with two out, Terry Whitfield coming up. Whitfield batting 309. Nine home runs, 27 runs batted in. Jack Clark at first, held on by Garvey. And the pitch to Whitfield in there for a strike. Clark has stolen 10 bases. So among other things... The Dodgers expect the Giants to run, particularly with Oates behind the plate. So Lopes and Russell have to be ready for Clark coming down, and then Dwyer trying to come in from third. The strike one pitch is a slow number up along first on the chalk. Goes foul in the count 0-2. In case you joined us a little late, Bill Madlock single to left, Jim Dwyer single to right, Madlock taking third. Jack Clark walked to load the bases. Willie McCovey popped up. The run is holding. Dal Evans sent Reggie Smith to the wall in right for his long fly ball, a run scoring. And now Terry Whitfield up there, 0-2. Oh Hooten out of a stretch. Right-hander deal, swung on and missed, so he got out of it cheaply enough. One run, two hits, two left. At the end of half an inning, Giants won. Dodgers coming up. Pullman, Seattle, Corvallis, Eugene, Palo Alto, Berkeley, Los Angeles, Tempe, and Tucson. Hello, football fans. This is Bill Mixon of KTAR Sports Radio, and that's the geographical scope of the Pac-10 Conference. I'll be representing KTAR and the Pac-10 Broadcasters and Skywriters Football Tour beginning August 23rd. Listen daily on 620 for my reports on the Cougars, the Huskies, Beavers, and Ducks, Cardinals, Bears, Bruins, Trojans, the Sun Devils, and Wildcats. A big season in college football just ahead, and KTAR Sports Radio will expand its coverage, first with on-the-spot reports from the Pac-10 football tour, interviews with the coaches and the players from around the conference. And this is George Allen. Be sure and join Bill Nixon for his special reports and interviews on 620 Sportsline every Monday through Friday throughout the Pac-10 tour.
You'll have an insight to Pac-10 football and what to look for during the 1978 season by tuning in daily to KTAR. The Pac-10 Tour, school by school, right here on 620, beginning August 23rd. Bert Hood and the Dodgers escaped the first inning cheaply enough. The Giants loading the bases with nobody out, and then San Francisco settling for just one run on Darrell Evans' sacrifice fly, which sent Reggie Smith to the wall and right before he could make the catch. Ed Halicki going through his warm-up tosses down to John Tamargo, the jolly green giant of the Giants, 5-6 and six overall this year. He pitched a very fine ball game at Candlestick last Saturday afternoon. He and Bob Welch were locked in a scoreless duel for seven. And then the Dodgers came up with the only two runs of the afternoon, the eighth to beat him. Strangely enough, Alicki was three and three against the Dodgers last year. He won three times here in Los Angeles. He lost three times in San Francisco. The Giants leading one to nothing to the bottom of the first. Let's get back to Ben. All right, Ross, Davey Lope. Bill North and Reggie Smith in that order. The Giants defensively, McCovey and Madlock, Metzger and Evans, Whitfield, Dwyer and Clark, Camargo behind the plate. Down south, scoreless at the end of three and a half, and big Ed Holicki ready and delivers, breaking ball low and away, ball one. I have an idea, and I think you'd agree, that neither team would stop at anything to beat the other. Here's the 1-0 pitch to Davey Lopes. And a breaking ball is in there, 1-1. One one. Last weekend, the Dodgers lost two in a row at Candlestick, and they must have fallen down to Los Angeles and borrowed some Southern California weather. Lopes takes high ball, too, because at Candlestick Saturday and Sunday, the weather was magnificent. And after the pounding last night, I have a feeling the Giants called up to the Bay Area and said some of that stuff down here. They pitch the Lopes in there, two and two. However, if they did ship some of that gray, foggy weather down south, it hurt them in the first inning. The 2-2 two -two pitch to Davy Lopes is a fly ball to left field. Whitfield is right there to put it away. Any other kind of weather but the kind of weather we have tonight, I honestly believe Darrell Evans would have hit a grand slam home run. But it's cool. It's unseasonably damp, and you know there have been showers in the mountains, etc., and that all affected the flight of the ball to right field. Had Evans hit that ball, let's say on a hot Sunday afternoon, he would have had a grand slam without a doubt. So it's still one nothing Giants, and here is Bill North. Bill hitting 267, backs off, and the pitch is strike, 0 and 1. Giants 1, Dodgers nothing, first inning, just the start of the evening. Big Halicki, right back 0-1, and he swings it inside at North left kneecap, 1-1. One one. Bill with a painful hamstring of the left leg. It's heavily taped, and although he didn't want to come out, they made him come out in the sixth inning last night, but he's right back in there tonight. 1-1 one, one pitch to Bill. Sails in there, strike two. 1-2. One and two. Halicki's lifetime average with the Dodgers, eight victories and five losses. It should be better than that. Breaking ball got him swinging, so down goes North. Halicki, lifetime against the Dodgers. His earned run average is two. Now here's Reggie Smith. Reggie Smith, certainly the man of the hour last night, but that's the trouble with baseball. You don't really enjoy a big night for very long before it's it's as old as yesterday's paper, and you're right back up to the plate. A look he delivers high, throwing a lot of breaking balls, hard sliders, and the count 1-0. and all. Of course, with a looky size, I guess you expect everything to come fast. Off speed, in there nicely, 1-1. One Big Ed is six feet seven, 220 pounder, out of Newark, New Jersey. The 1-1 one -one pitch, off speed, pull to the hole. McCovey can't get it, but Madlock can. Throws to Halicki, and that's the first inning. Giants one, Dodgers nothing. <laughs> Marquee, my good man, a little refreshment for a hard-working fellow, namely me. 
Here you go, sir. The king of beers. I got jokes, my good man. Where is the rest of it? Well, allow me to introduce you to the new bud, Half Pint. I'll be my guest, please. Ah, uh, yes. A stroke of ingenuity. Eight easy-tasting ounces of the king of beers in a neat little can. Perfect when you want a lot of quality, a little at a time. Bartender, I'd say you know your customers quite well. Another half pint, if you'd be so kind. When you say bud half pint, uh, you've said it. Sure. <laughs> For station identification, this is the Los Angeles Dodgers Radio Network. This is Tommy Lasorda, manager of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Stay up to date on the latest developments with the Los Angeles Dodgers by tuning to 620 Radio, KTAR in Phoenix. Afternoon, the Giants one run, two hits, no errors. The Dodgers no runs, no hits, no errors. They're in the bottom of the fourth at San Diego. No score. Bob Ochenko for the Padres. Bill Bonham for the Reds. And each side down there with two hits thus far. Top of the second. The Giants come on. Roger Metzger to the plate. Here's Vin. Roger will be followed by John Tamargo and then Ed Holicki. Bert Hooten into the windup. Right hander over the top. And the fastball on the outside corner for a strike. This is J.C. Penny family night. And Helen Dell serenading the large turnout with pennies from heaven. The strike one pitch on the way is a two-hopper hit to Russell. Bill up with it nicely and throws him out. One down in the second inning, and that'll bring up John Tamargo, a switch-hitting catcher who bat left-handed. Tamargo came over from the Cardinals. The Giants traded minor league pitcher Rob Dressler to get him, and they were fortunate they did so. The day that Tamargo joined the ball club, Mike Sadek fractured his jaw and had to go on the disable it. Tamargo hitting 294. Putin into the windup. Burt delivers and drops it low. Ball one. Tamargo appeared as a pinch hitter last night and grounded out. 1 0 to John. Big Ed Holicki on deck. Putin back to the plate 1 0, and it's popped in the air to right field. High enough for Reggie Smith to jog in to get under it. Reg waiting, puts it away. Two down. Ed Holicki coming up. Holicki, when he lost to Bob Wells, two to nothing. Had a single to left and a single to center. Holicki has five hits for the year. Two runs batted in. Two down, second inning. Giants one, Dodgers nothing. Putin delivers, drops it over for a strike. Going one. Halicki, of course, at 6-7 is the answer to a wild pitcher's prayer. He gives you quite a strike zone. Strike one pitch, a half swing, and it's fouled away. 0-2. Oh the end of four innings. South, no score. Reds and Padres. one nothing Giants, second inning. Putin to the windup. The strike two pitch to Holicki is low, ball one. Johnny Oates was all set to run to the dugout, and Paul Rungi tells him all about it. No doubt, Paul St. John, I sincerely appreciate your efforts to call balls and strikes, but if you don't mind. So Oates settles in a crouch. Now Hooten ready. Holicki waiting. The one-two pitch swung on and chopped foul up along third. So it's still one and two. The 12th meeting. So there's another half a dozen to follow. Two more in this current series. The Dodgers winning last night have now won six of 11 from San Francisco. Three out of four here. The Giants have won four out of seven up there. One, two pitch on the way. Fastball, see you later. Down goes Halicki and the Giants. And at the end of an inning and a half, Giants won, Dodgers nothing. Conserving energy should be everybody's job, and for motorists, a big area of energy savings comes from the gasoline he or she uses every day. So right here, your Union 76 dealer would like to suggest a very easy way to save yourself some gasoline money. 
can to help the country save energy at the same time. It's simply this. Keep your tires properly inflated. Oh, it seems like a small thing, perhaps, but it sure is important. For instance, if your tires are underinflated by five pounds, you could be cutting your gasoline mileage by as much as two and a half percent. Now, all drivers may not be able to save that much, but by saving as little as one percent, it's estimated the country could save over one billion gallons of gasoline a year. And remember, underinflated tires cost you money in treadwear, too. Friends, your full-service Union 76 dealer knows how important proper tire inflation can be. So ask him to help make sure your tires are inflated properly. See him soon and go with the spirit. The spirit of 76. The Dodgers have only two more homestands remaining this season, and you can purchase box and reserve seat tickets now at the Dodgers Advance Office at 1750 Stadium Way and at Ticketron and Mutual Athletes. The Dodgers' next home stand will open August the 24th with a four-game series against the Eastern Division champion Philadelphia Phillies. So plan now for the final two home stands. The Dodgers out on the road after Sunday's battle here with the Giants. They'll go to Philadelphia, New York, and Montreal, and then home on the 24th to face the Phillies, the first of four. Giants won, Dodgers nothing to the bottom of the second, the heart of the Dodger order coming up. Once again, here's Ben. Ron Say, Steve Garvey, and Dusty Baker in that order. Giants one run, two hits. The Dodgers went out in order. The Giant run, a long fly ball by Darrell Evans with the bases loaded, picked up Bill Madlock from third. All right, Ed Holicki looks in to get a sign. The big guy ready in the pitch to Ron Say. Almost behind him. He just did get out of the way of a fastball. Ball one. Say, with 13 hits, has seven RBIs against the Giants this year. 1-0 pitch, fastball outside, ball two, 2-0. Two oh. Reggie Smith with 11, leads the Dodgers. Say and Monday each have seven and Garvey five. Still no score down south at the end of four and a half. 2-0 oh pitch is a high fly ball into left center field, but it's playable. Terry Whitfield is there and makes the catch. So say a fly ball to left field, one away, and the batter, Steve Garvey. Steve Garvey. Steve Garvey has 16 home runs this year. Oddly enough, he has hit 13 of the 16 here at Dodger Stadium. Oddly in the sense that this has never been considered a, a home run haven. The record for home runs in one year by a Dodger at home, 18. He backs off, takes ball one. Ron Say, Dusty Baker, and Jimmy Wynn all had 18 home run years here. Garb swings, grounds one foul outside of third, down the line, one and one. Ed Holicki and John Tamargo, an infield, Willie McCovey, Bill Madlock, Roger Metzger, Darrell Evans, Terry Whitfield, Jim Dwyer, and Jack Clark in the outfield. 1-1 one, one pitch to Garvey. Swung on and missed, strike two. Halicki throwing hard, one and two. The Dodgers have beaten the last five right-handers that they've seen here. The 1-2 pitch on the way. Breaking ball is hit right up the middle, a base hit. Garvey singles up the middle, and that'll bring up Dusty Baker, hitting 270. Garvey leads the Dodgers in hits now against the Giants. In 11 games, he has 16 hits. Be one more than Reggie Smith. Jack Clark leads the Giants. Nor Madlock does, in fact, with 15. And with his base hit tonight, Madlock has 16. So here's Dusty Baker. One nothing Giants, bottom of the second, one away. Garvey, not a particularly great base runner, but he's still stolen six out of nine. Breaking ball is low, ball one, one and oh. On deck, Johnny Oates. Halicki, five and six with the league. The 1-0 pitch, Garvey goes, swung on and missed. Tamargo throws, much too high. (laughs) 
But Garvey has now stolen seven out of ten. And the tying run at second base with one out. One and one to count to Baker. Palicki heaves a big sigh. Of course, everything he does is big. Now he leans in as Garvey takes his lead at second. one nothing Giants. One out in the second. The 1-1 one, one pitch to Baker. Curve, foul back. One and two. One and two to Dusty Baker. He has nine home runs. 54 runs batted in. A lucky, a long look at Tamargo. Now Ed Reddy and the pitch inside and did it hit him? I believe it got him on the hands. It did. So Baker has a fastball catch him on the hands. Tommy Lasorda, Bill Bueller come out to see if he's okay. I think you have to understand one thing. It's pretty easy to get emotional when a player on your team is hit by a pitch. But you also have to realize the pattern. A licky, a side armor, is throwing a great number of breaking balls to the right-handed batter. So it's only natural then that the right-hand hitters are looking breaking ball and they're leaning over the plate to protect the outside part. And the only way a pitcher can then keep them honest is to come inside with the fastball. And he certainly doesn't want to hit anybody and put him on, but he does want to drive him out of there. And he got it too far inside, and Baker, waiting for the ball to break, was hit by the pitch. So two on, one out, and here is Johnny Oates. one nothing Giants, second inning. Balicki out of a stretch, and the pitch to Oatsy. Fastball on the outside corner for a strike. John batting 347. He has five RBIs. He had a key base hit to drive in a run against the Giants up at Candlestick. Strike one pitch. Chalicki delivers. Half swing foul, and the bat goes rolling out to the grass where Dusty Baker retrieves. And the count 0 2. No balls and two strikes to Johnny Oates. Here in the inning, Say fly to left. Garvey single to center and stole second. Baker hit by a pitch. And Oates up there with Bill Russell to follow. Terry Whitfield very shallow in left. Dwyer and Clark medium and Camargo out to talk to Halicki. Oh and two the count to Johnny Oates. Now, Tamargo in a crouch. No balls and two strikes. A licky ready. The pitch to Oates outside. Ball one. The end of five. No score in San Diego. One and two to Johnny Oates. John with that open stance. He's almost facing a licky. And the one two pitch. Off speed. Hit into center. Base hit. Garvey will score to tie it up. And Baker will go to third. You know, when you think about unsung heroes, the name Johnny Oates has to be right up there at the top. And you know what's remarkable about Oates beside everything else? He doesn't play very often. He goes days and days without playing. And you know he has struck out only three times this year. Remarkable. And Johnny Oates weighs in with a line drive single to tie up the ball game. Now the Dodgers have a chance to get out in front. Oates at first, Baker at third, and here is Bill Russell. A look he delivers, and the breaking ball low and away. Ball one. One, one tie. Second inning. Russell batting 272. The 1-0 pitch on the way. Halicki back to Russell. Fastball that's hit to right field. Coming up for it, however, is Clark. And Shu strings it. And the runners have nowhere to go. Marvelous play for the all-star right fielder, Jack Clark. Now he can play this game. 
Jack Clark put that ball just off the grass top and on the dead run. So a marvelous play by Clark and Bert Hooten coming up with two outs. Can you imagine all the ability he has? He can run, throw, hit, hit with power. And he's in his second year, Jack Clark. Better get accustomed to that name. He figures to be playing for a long, long time. So here's Bert Hooten. Hooten has a half a dozen hits. One run batted in this year. 1-1 one, one tie, bottom of the second, two out. Palicki ready, delivers, breaking ball low, ball one. 1-0. One oh. Johnny Oates held on by McCovey. Baker walking down the line from third. Palicki out of his stretch. The 1-0 pitch to Hooten. Inside, undressed him as the players say, ball two. 2-0. Two oh. Tomorrow night, Tommy John against Rob Nepper. And then Don Sutton against John Montefusco on Sunday. Here's the 2-0 pitch on the way. Alicki delivers in there at the knees. Two and one. Giants one, Dodgers one. Two out in the second. Alicki straightens up in the 2-1 pitch to Hooten. Breaking ball away. Ball three. Three and one to count. Putin looking for the hit sign as he looks down at Gomez. What do you think the percentages are of having the handcuffs on him? The three-one pitch to Bert Hooten. Halicki delivers, and it's pulled down the left field line. Base hit. In comes Baker. Johnny Oates to third. Hooten going to second with a double. Would you believe? double as they let him swing away. Lasorda figuring that Halicki figured the chances were 100 to 1 that Hooten would be swinging. Figuring Halicki would come right down the barrel with it. So Lasorda gave Hooten a swing sign and he doubled. So here's Davey Lopes now. Runners at second and third. Two to one Dodgers. The pitch to Lopes over for a strike. Hooten had two doubles last year, and this is his first extra base hit of this campaign. The strike one pitch to Lopes outside, one and one. So the Giants got a run in the first inning, and the Dodgers have come back with two and lead two to one. Hooten at second, Johnny Oates at third, one and one to Davey Lopes, who's been fighting a slump. Now the one-one pitch to Lopes, fastball over. Davies average at 276. He's had just four hits in his last 30 at bats, so you know he's struggling. The one-two pitch to Lopes. Breaking ball, got him, down he goes. So Lopes' struggle goes on, and of course that's the story in big league baseball. One minute hot, one minute cold. But for the Dodgers, two runs, three hits. And at the end of two, Dodgers two, Giants one. The expression, have a good day, enjoys a popularity that won't stop, nor should it. And certainly Farmer John wouldn't attempt to top it, but he can't resist adding a sequel. Have a good morning, he says, suggesting that any morning has a better chance of being good if it starts with a good breakfast, like one that features his fresh pork sausage. Now, maybe you like your sausage and patties. Well, then Farmer John roll sausages for you, and you'll find it in regular spicing and hot. Or perhaps you prefer skinless pork links. Well, this being the case... Reach for those flat little packages with the see-through windows that are labeled Farmer John. Whichever kind you choose, you'll savor the same full fresh flavor of the only strictly fresh Eastern corn-fed pork in the Southland, enhanced by a lively blend of natural herbs and spices. And you'll also savor winners. The Farmer John roll sausage and Farmer John skinless pork links are so exceptional in quality, why they're gold medal winners every year at the California State Fair. We have 
up two innings in. The Dodgers two runs, three hits. The Giants one run, two hits, no errors. Tommy John and Rob Nipper tomorrow night. And then Don Sutton and John Montefusco on Sunday. And, of course, first place at stake tonight. Bert Hooten tuning up, and we're going to the third. For more play-by-play, here's Ross Porter. All right, Ben. Bill Madlock, Jim Dwyer, and Jack Clark batting for the Giants in the third inning. Bert Hooten and Johnny Oates drove in the runs there in the second to give the Dodgers the lead. And now Hooten will take another look at Madlock, who singled and came around to score in the first inning. The Giants had an excellent opportunity to open up a big bulge on the Dodgers in the first inning tonight. They loaded the bases with nobody out on singles by Madlock and Dwyer and a walk to Clark. But McCovey popped up to Russell. And Evans drilled one to deep right field and Smith caught it just in front of the barrier. A sacrifice fly before Hooten struck out Whitfield. Burt's first pitch to his former teammate at Chicago, Bill Madlock, is low for a ball. Madlock with his 16th hit of the seasonal series against the Dodgers in the first inning. The next pitch to Madlock, a drive to left field and deep. Baker going back in front of the warning track. He's there for a one-handed catch. So Madlock, a long fly ball out to left. And Jim Dwyer comes on. With Madlock breaking in the first inning, Dwyer drilled a single to right field, sending Bill to third base. So since last Saturday, the Dodgers have won six in a row. The Giants have dropped four of their last five, and they're dead even. Hooten's first pitch to Dwyer is a fly ball to left center, twisting away from north, a dead run, he got it. Door leg and all, Bill North was able to run down and drive off the bat of Jim Dwyer as Dwyer tried to find the gap in left center field. And North got to it. Good catch by Billy North. Two away. Jack Clark walked in the first inning. He started the night as the number eight hitter in the National League. He and Reggie Smith both with the identical 300 marks. Hooten has beaten the Giants three times this year. Three to one, four to one, and five to one. Pitch to Clark on the inside corner for a strike. Only two of those three runs off Hooten have been earned, and one of them came when Jack Clark had a home run off Bird over the center field wall here in May. Hooten's 0-1 pitch, taken high for a ball. One ball, one strike. The Dodgers with three hits, the Giants with two. A hit batsman, Dusty Baker, Paved the way to the Dodger two-run second inning. Pitch to Clark as a drive to left field. It's hanging up for Baker. Dusty coming on. He's there now and makes the catch. And the Giants go in order for the second inning in a row. That is nine consecutive Giant batters retired by Hooten since he walked Clark to load the bases with nobody out on the first. At the end of two and a half, Dodgers two, Giants one. On the scoreboard, the Reds and Padres, no score in the bottom of the sixth at San Diego. Bonham against Ochenko. Atlanta leading Houston one to nothing at the end of six. Larry McWilliams beating Joe Necro. Montreal blanks Chicago one to nothing on Ross Grimsley's two hitter. He beat Dennis Lamb. St. Louis and New York one to one in the bottom of the ninth at Shea Stadium. Kuzman pitching that one for New York. Martinez, Schultz, and Mark Littell have worked for St. Louis. Tony Scott's eighth inning home run got St. Louis its run. Mets came back with one on the bottom of the eighth to square it. And Philadelphia ripped Pittsburgh tonight 15 to four with nine runs in the third inning. Bill North leads off here at Dodger Stadium in the third and takes inside for a ball. North went down swinging in the first inning. Ed Alecki to the windup with the next one to the left hand hitting North is outside ball two, two and oh. In the American League tonight, Texas beat Cleveland 8-2. John Matlack won his 10th game. Bobby Bonds socked his 22nd home run for the Rangers. 2-0 pitch to North. Fly ball to center field. Jim Dwyer going back. And in left center field, pulls it down. One away, that'll bring on Reggie Smith. Right field. Smith's on a ground ball to the right side in the first inning. Bill Matlock fielded it. McCovey had gone for the ball, so he was out of position. But Ed Halicki came over and covered, and they got the out. Oakland beat Minnesota in the first game of a doubleheader tonight, two to nothing. The second game is deadlocked two to two at the end of six. No report yet on California and Seattle. Alecki winds on the first pitch to Reggie. High for a ball. 
New York leading Baltimore 2-1 to one at the end of 5.5. They have been delayed by rain for an over an hour. The next pitch to Smith is way outside, ball 2-2-0. Two, two and oh. So Halicki went 2-0 to oh North and got him on a fly ball to center. Now he goes 2-0 oh to Reggie Smith. Ron Say on deck. 2-1 to one Dodgers, bottom of the third. Pitch to Smith. High hopper over Halicki's glove. Through to center field. Batted down by Metzger in shallow center. No play. So Reggie's got an infield hit. Metzger did a great job getting to the ball. Roger was about 25 feet on the right field side of the second base bag when he got his glove on it and slowed it down. But no chance for a play on Reggie Smith. So Reggie has his fifth hit in two nights. For the Dodgers, that's the fourth hit this evening off of Licky. And here's Ron Say. Say sent a fly ball to Terry Whitfield in left field in the second. There goes Smith. Say takes inside. DeMargo's throw high and wide. Off his glove in the center field. Smith keeps going to third base. And the Dodgers have Reggie Smith at third and one out in the third inning. Reggie Smith steals his 11th base of the year in 14 tries. And when DeMargo's throw went off the glove, of Bill Madlock in the shallow right center field. Smith got up and ran over to third. So it'll be an error on DeMargo. The first error of this game. The Giants had three errors last night and losing 12 to two. So now the Giants have to bring the infield in a couple of steps. Ron Say waiting, one and oh, and Halicki out of a windup. The breaking ball's grounded foul between third base and coach Preston Gomez. One ball and one strike to Ron Say. Giants got one in the first after loading the bases with nobody out. The Dodgers came back in the second with one out Garvey single, stole second. Baker was hit by a pitch. Oates singled in a run. Then after Clark made a good catch on Bill Russell, Bert Hooten doubled in the go-ahead run. Halicki's 1-1 pitch to Say is foul back, one and two. Halicki looking for a strikeout in this situation. Say... Trying to come up with a sacrifice fly at worst. Ronnie has six sacrifice flies. He's second on the Dodgers. Reggie Smith has eight. He's trying to pick Reggie up now from third base. One and two to say. One out, third inning, two one Dodgers. So Licky winds and delivers, and say pops one foul out of play over the giant dugout. Tomorrow night, Tommy John and Bob Nepper. It's Hollywood Stars night. The Stars will play at 6.30 against an all-star media team. And the game tomorrow night is at 8 o'clock instead of the usual 7 o'clock starting time on Saturday night. The 1-2 pitch to say. Whoop down the middle. Might drop in the center field. Metzger going out. One hands it over his head. Smith has to hold on at third. So with the giant infield drawn in, say almost popped that one over Metzger's head. But Roger ran out of the center field and caught it going away. And we have two away in the third inning. So Alicky gets Say. And it'll be up to Steve Garvey if the Dodgers are to cash in another run here in the third. Two runs, four hits, no errors for the Dodgers. One run, two hits, one error for the Giants. Tommy John and Bob Nepper tomorrow night. Don Sutton and John Montefusco Sunday afternoon. And both games are sold out. Here's Alicky's first pitch to Garvey. A drive to right center field. Dwyer racing over. He's there now and makes the catch in right center field. No runs, one hit, one error, and the Dodgers leave Smith at third base. At the end of three, Dodgers two, Giants one. The day is done. It's time to let it go. It's the moment to unwind. So just they Like an eagle.
Dodgers of Bush, St. Louis. Here at Dodger Stadium, Bert Hooten leading at Halicki. Let's go to the fourth. Two to one, Dodgers. For more play-by-play, here's Ben. All right, Ross, Willie McCovey, followed by Darrell Evans and then Terry Whitfield, with the Dodgers holding on to a two to one lead. Hooten delivers, and Big McCovey takes a strike. Going one. McCovey popped up with the bases loaded in the first inning. Bird, a long look at Johnny Oates. The outfield split a gap in left center. And the next one is popped in the air to Russell. Bill backs out on the grass, calling, and puts it away. It is interesting, after the one-sided games last night here and in San Diego, how they come up so tough tonight. They're scoreless down there in the seventh, and here it is two to one, Dodgers in the fourth. Darrell Evans had that long fly ball with the bases loaded. That was catchable and meant a run. But as we said, under different weather conditions, hot weather, he'd have hit it out. So Darrell hitting 258. He has 52 RBIs, and he grounds it to Lopes. He backs up to get a hop and throws him out. Two down, and Terry Whitfield coming up. For the Dodgers, of course, they could be haunted by the old refrain, waste not, want not. They had runners at second and third in the second inning, and Lopes struck out to end it. And, of course, they wasted Reggie Smith at third with one out in the third. But so far, Putin holding on two to one. Terry Whitfield takes a look at a strike, 0-1. On deck, Roger Metzger. Bird into the windup. Strike one pitch on the way on the hands, and that's popped up. Lopes looks at Russell. Russell decides to take it, and he does. So very quietly go the Giants, and that's 12 in a row retired by Hooten since the walk to Jack Clark. At the end of three and a half, Dodgers two, Giants one. At many Union 76 stations, there's something very special called certified service. It's your assurance that your car will be looked after by professionals, by people who have really got the spirit. Go with the spirit, the spirit of 76. You may have noticed that it's tough these days to find a service station that'll do any work on your car at all. But it's not that way at Union 76 stations, where they offer certified service. When you see a man wearing certified service stripes, each stripe means he's received specialized training in areas such as brakes, tune-ups, air conditioning. And in his service bay, he has the modern equipment necessary to take good care of your car. When you need service, look for that man. And be assured he can do the job right. It's one more reason to go with the spirit. Go with the spirit. The spirit of 76. The only doubleheader on the Dodgers schedule will take place during the next homestand, Saturday, September the 2nd, with two games against the New York Mets. The first game will start at 3 o'clock. Don't forget the date, Saturday, September the 2nd. The only doubleheader of the season here at Dodger Stadium. Tonight we've gone through three and a half innings. The Dodgers two runs, four hits, no errors. The Giants one run, two hits, and one error. In the fourth inning, Dusty Baker, Johnny Oates, and Bill Russell coming up. And the Dodgers come to the plate. Dusty. Dusty Baker hit by the pitch, and it turned out to be a big mistake because he eventually scored. That was a pitch after all those breaking balls where Herklick, he tried to come inside and got it too far inside. Off speed and low ball one. One and oh. Baker has only been hit twice this year. Here's the 1-0 pitch on the way, and that's outside. Of course, that's a nice thing to say when you're sitting up here in the booth. Only hit twice. Ron Say leads the Dodgers in hit by pitches. He's been nailed four times. The pitch to Baker outside, ball three, three and oh. On the Giants, uh, Jack Clark, Bill Madlock have each been hit three times. Three and oh to Baker. Johnny Oates on deck. Two to one Dodgers, fourth inning. Alicky's 3 0 pitch. Swung on and popped up. McCovey is there. Big Willie backing up and makes the play. So the Dodgers going all out. They let Hooten swing three and one, and he doubled. They let Baker swing three and oh, and he pops up. Here's Johnny Oates, who weighed in with that key base hit to get the Dodgers even in the second inning. John, one for one. 
two runs, four hits for the Dodgers. One run, two hits for the Giants. One error. Alecki at 6-7, standing on a 10-inch mound. Big man ready, delivers, and the fastball outside, ball one. One and oh. Bill Russell on deck. Alecki's 1-0 pitch on the way. And that's high and outside, ball two, two and oh. There have been some big pitchers in the league. Of course, you remember basketball star Gene Conley with the Braves. He was 6'8". He was a good one. Usually when they're that big, they're a little too big. You figure they have trouble feeling their position, among other things. But Palicki's doing well. The 2-0 pitch, Dotsi is inside. Ball three. Three and oh. So Palicki fighting his control. He went three and oh to Baker. Now three and oh to Oates. Alecki delivers in there. The Reds fail to score in the seventh, so it's still no score in San Diego. Three and one to Johnny Oates. Alecki ready, and here he comes. Fastball fouled away. Three and two. Another large crowd, of course, a sellout for each night and for Sunday as well. They're playing this one a lot tougher. Two runs, four hits for the Dodgers. One run, two hits for the Giants. A licky ready in the 3-2 pitch to Johnny Oates. is lifted to left field. Whitfield, who was shallow, has to go back a little bit. Terry makes the catch. Two down. Bill Russell came up with Oates at third and... Actually, with Oates at first and Baker at third in the second inning. He had a little fly ball to right field, and Jack Clark made a dazzling catch, and the runners had to hold. He lifts a little pop fly back a third down the line. Evans in foul ground is right there. So the Dodgers out in order, and at the end of four, Dodgers two, Giants one. As you know, our schools have courses in American history, English history, and almost every witch history, but never hot dog history. So we now make amends for this oversight, courtesy of Farmer John. The term hot dog was created by sports columnist Tad Dorgan in 1900 after watching the Red Hots being peddled at the old New York Polo Grounds. And the marriage of the sausage to the elongated bun took place four years later at the St. Louis, Louisiana Purchase Exposition. But hot dog history goes back much further. In the 1600s, a new sausage was promoted in Frankfurt, Germany, later to become known as a Frankfurter or Frank. Thus, this city claims to be the birthplace of the hot dog. Vienna, however, disputes this claim pointing to the word wiener. And as a footnote to hot dog history, Farmer John sides with both cities. With a nod to Vienna, he offers you his meat wieners, and with a light nod to Frankfurt, his new beef franks. So there you have it, hot dog history, and footnote to same. Today in baseball, August the 11th, in 1902, the first extra inning shutout of the American League took place with the Philadelphia Athletics beating the Detroit Tigers one to nothing in 13 innings. On August the 11th, 1907, in the second game of a doubleheader, shortened by agreement, Ed Carger of the Cardinals pitched a seven-inning perfect game, beating Boston four to nothing. And speaking of perfectos, it was on this date in 1950 that Vern Bickford of the Boston Braves pitched a no-hitter over the Brooklyn Dodgers and won it seven to nothing in a night game at Braves Field in Boston. 28 years ago tonight. Where is he now? Vern Bickford. Let's go to the fifth. Dodgers two, Giants one. Then I know where I am, I think. That's the first no-hitter I ever broadcast. So into the fifth. Two to one, Dodgers. Roger Metzger, followed by John Tomargo, and then Ed Holicki, hooting into the windup, and the pitch a little low, ball one. Metzger has become a terror as a left-handed batter. He's always been a switch hitter. But, boy, hitting left-handed for the Giants has really paid off. The 1-0 pitch, a fly ball to right field. Reggie Smith is there. One away. Metzger right around the 300 mark ever since he came to the Giants. And that means just about strictly as a left-handed batter. So with switch hitters Metzger and Tamargo back-to-back, here comes Tamargo. John flied to right in the second inning, 0 for 1. Two to one, Dodgers, fifth inning, one out. 
Putin into the windup, delivers, knuckle curve low, ball one. Interesting answer to a quiz question tonight to pitch over for a strike. They were talking about the Dodger farmhand who led the International League in home runs and RBIs in 1960. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch on the way, and that's over, 1-2. and two. Said he's in uniform tonight. And that Dodger farmhand back in 1960 was and still is Joe Altabelli. And, of course, a teammate on that Montreal club was Tommy Lasorda. The 1-2 pitch, half swing, and down goes Tamargo. So here today and John Tamargo. And with two out, here is Ed Halicki. Halicki struck out in the second inning. He's 0 for 1. The end of 7, no score. San Diego and Cincinnati. So Halicki 0 for 1. Bert Hooten into the windup. Right-hander delivers. Half swing. The pitch gets away from Oates. Scoreboard shows 1-0. and oh. There was no foul tip sign by Paul Runge. So we'll assume it's one ball and no strikes. Putin into the windup. Now the 1-0 pitch, Dad. Swung on and missed. 1-1. One and one. Bert Hooten rolling along. He retired 14 in a row since he walked Jack Clark in the first inning. The next one, knuckle curve, drops over, one and two. Two to one, Dodgers, top of the fifth, two out. The one-two pitch to Ed Holicki, fouled away. Giants and the Dodgers, boy, what remarkable shows they have put on. Putin ready in the one-two pitch to Ed Holicki. Ground ball back a third. Say backhands it nicely. Turns and throws out the big man. Big play by Ron Say. That means 15 in a row retired by Bert Hooten. And at the end of four and a half, Dodgers two, Giants one. Do you know what to do in a dust storm on the highway? You should. It could save your life. When dust hits the highway, get off the road as far as possible. Stop. Turn your lights off. Set the emergency brake. Make sure your brake lights are off. If you can't pull off the road, slow down. Turn your lights on and use the center line as a steering guide. Never stop on the pavement. KTAR News Radio wants to keep you alive. And we're offering a free dust storm bulletin telling you what action to take if you're caught in a dust storm. The bulletin also contains a map of dust storm areas in the state. To obtain a copy, send your name and address to Dust Storms, KTAR News Radio, P.O. Box 711, Phoenix, 85001. That's Dust Storms, KTAR News Radio, P.O. Box 711, Phoenix, 85001. The cast of Happy Days is coming back to Dodger Stadium. The date is Tuesday, August the 29th. And Henry Winkler and the cast of the Happy Days television show will play in a preliminary softball game at 6.30. It'll be the Dodgers against the Montreal Expos that night at 7.30. So make your plans now to see Henry Winkler, Tom Bosley, Ron Howard, all the gang from Happy Days here at Dodger Stadium on Tuesday night, August the 29th. And, of course, tomorrow night, Hollywood Stars night here at Dodger Stadium. Stars play their game against the media at 6.30. And then at 8 o'clock, an hour later than usual on Saturday evening, Tommy John goes to the mound, and he'll face Bob Nepper of the Giants in the third game of this series. Sunday afternoon in the finale of the series and the homestand, Don Sutton gets the call for the Dodgers, and John the Count Montefusco will pitch for San Francisco. A reminder again, tomorrow night's game and Sunday afternoon's game both sold out. Bert Hooten leads off. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Dodgers two, Giants one. Bert Hooten doubled down the left field line in the second inning on a big decision by Tommy Lasorda. With the count three balls and one strike, he led Hooten swing, and Bert hit a fastball inside the left field foul line. So Halicki ready and delivers. Fastball is outside, ball one. So it is Hooten's double that drove in the tiebreaker, and that's the difference in the game. 
1-0 pitch to Burt. Fouled away. 1-1. One one. Davey Lopes on deck. Bill North to follow. Dodgers two runs, four hits. Giants one run, two hits. Halicki ready. The 1-1 pitch on the way. Fastball fouled off. 1-2. and two. Halicki pitched a no-hitter against the New York Mets three years ago. In fact, it's almost an anniversary. It was August the 24th. The 1-2 pitch to Hooten outside, ball two. So the Giants have three no-hit pitchers on their club. Halicki, Montefusco, and of course, Vida Blue. Two and two to Burt. Halicki into the windup in the 2-2 pitch. Fastball just outside, ball three. Halicki's 3-2 pitch is full foul outside of third and down the line. Halicki was on the disabled list for 20-some-odd days this year with a bad leg. He has three strikeouts tonight, throwing a lot of breaking balls. The 3-2 pitch. Ed's pitch is lifted to left field. Terry Whitfield is there, waiting now, and Terry makes the catch. One away. Halicki much more of a pitcher than he was when he first came up. When he first came up, he was one of those hard-going strikeout pitchers. And last year, he struck out 168, 153 the year before that. Here's Davey Lopes fly to left and struck out. Halicki delivers, breaking ball fouled away, 0-1. So Davey battling the slump on deck, Bill North. Halicki comes back 0-1, breaking ball low and away, 1-1. One one. Despite the fact he is under 500, 5-6, five Halicki has a great earned run average. Pitch fouled off, 1-2. Halicki's ERA, and that's really the best way to judge a pitcher, is less than 3. Needless to say, at 6-7 in college, he played basketball. Here's the 1-2 pitch to Davey Lopes. Fastball got him swinging. So Davey is all tied up, as so often happens to all of them, and he walks away. Two down, and Bill North, the batter, at seven in a row, retired by Halicki. Hooten has retired 15 in a row. Bill North, struck out, flied to center. He's 0 for 2. Well, looky ready and delivers off speed, but high. Ball one. Darrell Evans playing on the edge of the grass at third. McCovey is up a step, just in case North decides to dump one. Bill has not been hitting as a left-handed batter at all. He fouls one away, one and one. In fact... The difference is 120 points from one side of the plate to the other. He came into this game hitting 348 right-handed and only 226 left-handed. Now the 1-1 pitch on the way. Breaking ball, roll down to Bill Matlock. That'll do it for Bill North. So the Dodgers will go very, very quickly. Seven, eight in a row now retired by Halicki. And at the end of five, Dodgers two, Giants one. Then you know that any time is really the right time to say Budweiser. And when the weather's warm like this, I say it with a frosty mug I keep in the freezer. Yes, sir, Jerry. A frosty mug really complements the smooth-tasted Budweiser. Well, you know how I love compliments. Well, I'll see if I can think of one. Why, Jerome, what a nice mug you have. You're a long home run. After the game is won, the king appears is waiting for your call. When you say Budweiser, when you say Hey Dodger, when you say Budweiser, you said it all. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis. You said it all. 
Newt working on a string. He's retired 15 Giants in succession. We go to the sixth inning, and the Giants bring up the top of the lineup. Bill Madlock, Jim Dwyer, and Jack Clark in that order with the Dodgers two runs, four hits. Giants one run, two hits, and an error. Madlock single a left and eventually worked his way around to score in the first inning. Last time up, he flied to left. Say, about even with the bag at third. Madlock, in a crouch at the plate, takes the first one outside, ball one. Bill Madlock with a 348 lifetime batting average against the Dodgers. And right there again this year. Blue 1-0 pitch, low and away, ball two. 2-0. Two and, oh. and in talking about his lifetime, that's over 200 at-bats against the Dodgers. So he's made his point. The 2-0 pitch, little fastball, it's high, ball three. So after retiring 15 in a row, Putin falls behind to Madlock, 3-0. and oh. Bird Ready delivers a strike, 3-1. and one. Now the 3-1 pitch to Bill Madlock, low, ball four, so that breaks it. The last man to get aboard was Clark, who walked in the first inning. And now Madlock walks in the sixth. Dwyer. Jim Dwyer, single to right, fly to center. He's playing center field over Larry Herndon tonight. Jim, left-hand hitter. Hitting 224. He has a lifetime batting average about 240. Jim Dwyer, tying run at first in Madlock. Putin looks over there, comes to Dwyer, and he gets a base hit into right field. Madlock to second, and he will not run on Reggie Smith. Reggie lobs it in to Bill Russell. So Jim Dwyer giving Bert Hooten a bad time. First and second, nobody out in the sixth inning. Two to one Dodgers. And now, here come the big boys. Jack Clark, Willie McCovey, Darrell Evans, and the Dodger bullpen immediately will get busy. Lance Rotson, who is up in the first inning, is throwing again now in the bullpen. Clark has walked and flied to left. Clark has sacrificed. He has actually sacrificed twice this year. The chances, however, would seem to be against it, but we'll see. Garvey can't take any chances. He's up in front of Dwyer, and Say is near the bag at third. Clark, right-hand hitter. And Hooten delivers, check swing, it's over for a strike. Going one, little knuckle curve. Clark kind of backs out, and somebody in a giant dugout might have let out a holler. And now Clark talks to Rungi. 0 and 1. Paul Rungi, a chip off the old block. His dad was an American League umpire for many years. Ed Rungi. All right, Paul puts the mask back on. That's usually the sign that the grumbler has touched a nerve. Strike one pitch to Jack Clark. Taken on the outside corner, strike two. And Clark doesn't agree with that one. Rungi, however, with the mask still on. And some of the Giants would appear to be rather vocal down in the dugout. We say appear because they're moving around. We can't actually hear them. Oh, and two. For Clark back up to the plate. Madlock at second, Dwyer at first. Nobody out, sixth inning. Dodgers two, Giants one. Food and ready, and the strike two pitch to Clark is a ground ball to say. Backs up for a hop. Down to Lopes, they get one. Over to Garvey, double play. Pretty tough at bat for Jack Clark. He bickered with Paul Rungi on two pitches, hits into a double play, and argues with first base umpire Andy Olson. And with two out, Clark, looking daggers at Rungi, now goes into the giant dugout. Two down, the tying run 90 feet away. That puts pressure on Johnny Oates to hold on to that knuckle curve. And here is Willie McCovey. Timeout. I think McCovey, in swinging the bat just now, gave Johnny Oates a crack across the knuckles like an irate teacher in the old days with a ruler. McCovey didn't mean it, 
He brought the bat back, and he got Johnny Oates right on the knuckles. Now we're ready. Putin looks over at Matlock. Bird into the windup. The pitch to McCovey is taken inside. Ball one. McCovey has popped up twice. In San Diego, Doug Bear has started the bottom of the eighth inning instead of Bill Bonham. Here's the 1-0 pitch to McCovey. Swung on and hit to right field. Reggie coming on, coming on, can't get it. It falls in front of him for a base hit, and Madlock scores to tie it up. When Willie McCovey is at the plate, the Dodger right fielder plays just outside of Pasadena, and that's where Reggie was, and he couldn't quite get up to it. So what might have been a fly ball for a lot of other hitters drops in for a single, and the run scores. And now here is Darrell Evans, 2-2 in the sixth inning. Evans takes a strike. Darrell had a scoring fly ball with the bases loaded, grounded out in the fourth. So McCovey picks up his ninth RBI against the Dodgers, even though he's hitting only a little more than 100 against them. The pitch, ground ball to Garvey. He short hops it, and that'll do it. However, it's a run. Two hits and a walk, and a man left. The end of five and a half, a 2-2 tie. Friends, have you noticed how many people these days are restoring old cars? Antique cars, vintage sports cars, cars from the nifty 50s. The real car buffs spend hours painting and sanding, washing and waxing. Now, you may not be interested in restoring an antique car, but you could have one that's five or six years old. And naturally, you'd like to keep it running as well as it can. That's why we want you to know about 76 unleaded gasoline. Let's say you drive a car built before 1975. If it was designed to run on regular, chances are you can use 76 unleaded in it. And 76 unleaded's got the spirit you want. It's the cleaner air gasoline for most cars that run on regular. And of course, it's right for new cars as well. So friends, remember the name, 76 unleaded. Why not try a tank full soon? No matter what kind of car you drive, you can go with the spirit, the spirit of 76. It was 17 years ago today, August the 11th, 1961, when Warren Spahn won his 300th game, defeating Chicago 2-1. to one. Spahnie went on to win 63 more. And on August 11th, 1961, Roger Maris hit home run number 42 to start a string of seven home runs in six consecutive games to tie an American league record and to put him that much closer to his record-breaking 61 homers. Mickey Mantle that day hit number 44 of his 54 total for the season. Here at Dodger Stadium, a brand new one, 2-2. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Here's Vin. Well, Reggie Smith will start it. Then Ron Say and Steve Garvey, 2-2. Two, two. two runs, four hits for each side. The Giants have an error. Reggie grounded out and single to center. Ed Halicki is on a roll now. He's retired eight in a row. Off-speed pitch is high, ball one. Hooten had retired 15 in a row. Walk Madlock, and the walk was cashed in. The 1-0 pitch to Reggie. Popped in the air, and it'll be the shortstop Metzger working his way on the rim. Now Evans says he'll take it, but Metzger insists, and Roger makes the catch. One away. One down, Ron Say the batter. He flied to left and popped it short. There are, so we are told 184 members of the San Francisco Giant Boosters Club with us tonight and we're delighted to have the good folks from up north down here. Say hits one foul outside of third on one. In San Diego no score in the eighth, two men on, two out and Dave Winfield is at the plate. Doug Bear is pitching for Cincinnati. 0-1 oh, to count to Ron Say in the battle for first place. Now the strike one pitch on the way. Fastball low, 1-1. One one. Alicky stumbling in his follow-through so that he showed his numbers to Say. He turned completely around. 1-1. One one. Alicky is due to bat fourth when the Giants hit in the seventh inning. 1-1 one, one pitch to Say is a high drive into center. 
Back for it goes Wire to the wall. At the wall. Leaps up. It is gone. Home run for Say. Dodgers take a 3-2 to two lead. That, by the way, is the fifth home run that Ron Say has hit against the Giants this year. Five of his 15. The pitch to Garvey is a bunt. He runs into it, but he's still in the batter's box. Joe Aldebelli ready to argue, claiming that Garvey is out, but plate umpire Rungi indicated that he ran into the bunt while still in the batter's box. A $20 book of Union All Auto Script will go to the Intercommunity Blind Center in Whittier on that home run by Ron Say. So Aldebelli has had his words with Paul Runge. 0 and 1 to count. So with one out, Ron Say clears the center field wall for Say, his eighth RBI and fifth home run against the Giants. Garvey takes a strike. 0 and 2. So after retiring nine in a row, Halicki gives up the home run and the tie. The strike two pitch to Garvey is whacked to left field. Whitfield going back has a play on it and makes the catch. In the Dodger bullpen, just in case, right hander Rick Roden begins to throw. And Dusty Baker coming up. Dodgers three runs, five hits. Giants two runs, four hits. The Dodgers now have hit 13 home runs against the Giants. And Baker takes an off-speed pitch inside, ball one. Giants have hit 11 against the Dodgers. 1-0. Alecki back to his hitter in a half-swing looper, going out to get it is Matlock, and he has, and that's it. One run, one hit, the home run by Say. At the end of six, Dodgers three, Giants two. There are so many different kinds of sandwiches that can be made at home, the list would make a big league baseball schedule look skimpy. Perhaps then, with an endless number of choices, you may be overlooking a delicious threesome that's truly something. Farmer John Liverwurst, Liverwurst with bacon, and Braunschweiger. These luscious liver spreads are as hearty, meaty rich, and fully satisfying as anything you could desire for your sandwiches. Eastern corn-fed pork that Farmer John dresses fresh himself gives them a super fresh flavor and natural seasonings add a lively spiciness you'll like. What else you'll like, too, is the cost of sandwiches made with a Farmer John liver spread. Not only is the sticker price remarkably low in our Southern California food stores, but each hefty 8-ounce roll contains enough spread for five or six sandwiches. Farmer John Liverwurst, Liverwurst with bacon and Braunschweiger, a threesome for your sandwich making that's far too good to be overlooked any longer. At the end of six, Dodgers three runs, five hits, Giants two runs, four hits, and one error. By the way, we told you in the bottom of the eighth inning, the Padres had two on, two out, and Dave Winfield at the plate, and Winfield struck out. So the Reds are coming up in the ninth inning in San Diego. No score down there. 3-2 Dodgers. Seventh inning. More play. Here's Ross. Okay, Van Terry Whitfield, Roger Metzger, and John Tamargo for the Giants in the seventh inning. Bert houston has got the lead back. 3-2. Thanks to Ron Say's 15th home run of the year. It's the Dodgers' second home run off Ed Halicki this season. Steve Garvey hit the other one here at Dodger Stadium. Houston's first pitch to Whitfield is popped up down the middle. Lopes going out, North coming in. North calling. Billy's there now and makes the catch. So Whitfield is 0 for 3 tonight. And the Dodgers have the first giant out of the seventh inning. Roger Metzger, Roger Metzger has bounced to short and flied to right field. The Dodgers last year saw a lot of Ed Halicki. He made six starts against them. He had six decisions, splitting them. So they had plenty of opportunity to hit the long ball, and they did. They had eight home runs off of Licky, 
the most they had against any pitcher in the league. And tonight, Say's home run puts them ahead in the sixth. The first one to Metzger, in for a called strike. Hooten with three strikeouts. He's walked two. Bird has scattered four hits. Two in the first, two in the sixth. He got 15 in a row between the first and sixth. Hooten's next pitch is a high hopper. Hooten backs up and gloves it. Turns and throws to Garvey, and they get Metzger. So Metzger beat it down into the dirt at home plate. Rolled out to Hooten, and it's an easy out. Two away. John Tamargo comes up. DeMargo has flied to right and struck out. Three runs, five hits, no errors for the Dodgers. Two runs, four hits, one error for the Giants. They're in the ninth inning in San Diego. Over 33,000 there have seen quite a pitching duel. Bob Ochenko all the way for the Padres. Bill Bonham with the first seven for the Reds, and Doug Bear got out of a mess in the eighth. DeMargo takes one low from Hooten for a ball. Bird into the windup in the 1-0 pitch. A ground ball to the right side. Looks to his left. He's there to field it and throws him out. The Giants go in order for the fifth inning of the seventh. And at the end of six and a half, Dodgers three, Giants two. This is a dust storm alert. The Arizona Highway Patrol has reported blowing dust of varying intensity along Interstate 10 south of Phoenix and on Interstate 8 east of Gila Bend. If you observe dense dust blowing across or approaching the highway, do not enter the area. We suggest you pull off the pavement as far as possible and stop. Turn your lights off. Should you be engulfed by dense dust, do not stop on the pavement. If you are unable to pull off the pavement, we suggest you proceed at an appropriately reduced speed. Turn your lights on. Use the center line as a guide. Again, never stop on the pavement. Most dust storms last only a few minutes. If you have any doubt about the safety of driving conditions, pull off the pavement and wait for conditions to clear. This has been a dust storm alert. Here's Danny Goodman's latest souvenir offer, a Dodger flashlight, a Dodger key ring, a Dodger pennant, and 20 individual 5 by 7 Dodger player photos, all four items for only $2. Send to Danny Goodman, Dodger Stadium, Los Angeles, 90012. Ed Halecki, in perhaps his final inning of work tonight at Dodger Stadium. We'll look at Johnny Oates, Bill Russell, and Bert Hooten. The Dodgers leading 3 to 2. Tonight's paid attendance, 52,869. So we had almost 51,000 paid last night, almost 53,000 paid tonight. And tomorrow night, game three, Tommy John and Bob Nepper. Sunday afternoon, Don Sutton and John Montefusco. Total in the house, 54,252. For the Dodgers, this is their 14th crowd this year of 50,000 or more. All of last year, they had 16. And they are sure to sell out here the next two tomorrow night and Sunday afternoon. Here's Johnny Oates, who's single in the tie and run in the second, and fly to left in the fourth. Johnny checks his swing, and his side armor is inside from Alicki. Alicki has allowed five hits, three of them in the second inning when the Dodgers got two runs. Oates takes on the outside corner for a strike, one and one. In the second, Garvey single. Baker was hit by a pitch, and Oates singled in the first run. And then with two out, Hooten doubled in the run to make it 2-1 to one Dodgers. Breaking ball, a slow hopper to McCovey. He feels it, Halicki coming over, and they make the 3-1 put out. So Oates retired on a bouncer to the right side. Bill Russell had a base hit taken away by Jack Clark in the second inning. At the time, the Dodgers had Baker at third and one away. Hooten then followed with his RBI double. Russell, over two. Ground ball, base hit by Russell to the left of Evans into left field. So the Dodgers have their sixth hit. And one on, one out in the seventh inning. Meanwhile, in San Diego, George Foster has just driven in a run in the top of the ninth inning with an extra base hit into the left field corner. 
And Dave Concepcion just beat the relay throw to the plate. So the Reds are leading one to nothing in the top of the ninth inning. Here at Dodger Stadium, Bert Hooten is the batter. Hooten with a double, an RBI, and a fly ball out to left. Russell leading away from first. Draws a throw from Halicki, and McCovey digs it out. Three runs, six hits, no errors for the Dodgers. Two runs, four hits, one error for the Giants. Hooten around a bunt, does bunt, and it's foul up along first. So in the ninth inning at San Diego, with one out, Bob Ochinko walked Dave Concepcion on four pitches. And George Foster ripped one in the left field corner for extra bases, driving Concepcion home. Tomorrow night in San Diego, it'll be Gaylord Perry against Tom Seaver. Evans weighing on the grass at third. Hooten bunt on the first pitch. He's around a bun on the second. Lays it down in front of the plate. Alecki's got it. His only play is back to first to Madlock. And Hooten sacrifices Russell to second base. So Hooten sacrifices for the 13th time this year. And with two away, the Dodgers leave it up to Davey Lopes to get another run. Davey, 0 for 3 tonight. Fly to Whitfield. And then struck out his last two times up. Lopes has been blanked by Halicki all year. He is 0 for 10 against the Jolly Green Giants. In fact, the Giants have done a very good job of keeping Lopes off base all season when they've seen him. He's 5 for 34. Davey puts one over first. McCovey going back and reaches up and pulls it down. So Lopes almost got it over McCovey's head, but they don't call him stretch for nothing. And he flagged that one down. No runs, one hit, one left. And at the end of seven, Dodgers three, Giants two. Dodgers lead the Giants 3-2 to two as we go to the eighth inning at Dodger Stadium. They're still in the ninth at San Diego. The Reds have gotten one run, and they have two runners on base with one out. Cincinnati leading San Diego 1 to nothing. The Dodgers here tonight trying to equal their longest winning string of the year. The last time they won seven in a row was in June, and they didn't gain any ground whatsoever on the San Francisco Giants. Tonight, if they win, they go into first place for the first time since May the 12th, undisputedly. But Bert Hooten still got six outs to go. And the Giants, as we go to the eighth inning, will go for a pinch hitter for Ed Halicki. And let's get back to Ben. All right, Ross. Heidi Cruz hitting 223 will come up in bat for Halicki. So Halicki becomes a very tough pitcher. He lost two to nothing to Bob Welsh, allowing only five hits. And he goes out losing three to two tonight, allowing only six hits. Halicki, although he hit a batter, did not walk anybody, and he struck out three. Cruz, right-hand batter, hitting for Halicki, and then Madlock and Dwyer. Hooten into the windup and delivers, and there's a ground ball sharply to the hole. Russell from deep in the grass throws, and it's a wild throw. Finally backed up by Oates, and Cruz is into second base. So it'll be a hit and an error. Russell, by the time he got to the ball, was three feet at least on the grass in left field. 
He tried to get him anyway, and in straining, he overthrew. So it's an infield single on an error, and just like that, the Giants have the tying run with nobody out. Bill Madlock flied to left, singled, and walked. So Cruz at second, nobody out in the eighth, 3-2 Dodgers. Boy, Hooten's work is really cut out for him now. The pitch to Madlock. He bunts in the air, foul, and it's caught by Oates. Big out. Madlock was not sacrificing. He was a man on the move. He was trying to push a butt up along first base. Instead, he fouls out. Now Jim Dwyer, the batter, the left-hand hitter starting in center field tonight over Larry Herndon, has made the move stand up. He is two for three. Twice he is single to right. Dwyer waiting. Bird Hooten out of a stretch. A look back at Heidi Cruz, and the right-hander delivers. Knuckle curve for a strike. 0-1. Oh Meanwhile, Cincinnati trying for more. They already lead one to nothing. They've loaded the bases in the ninth. Now, Chinko has had to leave, and Raleigh Fingers has been called in in relief. 0-1 oh to Dwyer. Jim, two for three. Heidi Cruz at second. 0-1. Oh Hooten taking a long look, and now Oates goes out to talk to him. The Giants loaded the bases in the first inning, and with one out, Darrell Evans, a long fly ball to right, got the run over. The Dodgers came back with two in the second. Bert Hooten hitting a 3-1 pitch for a double to drive in the second run. The Giants tied it in the sixth. McCovey singled home Madlock, but Say homered in the sixth to give the Dodgers a 3-2 lead. Oh, and one the count to Jim Dwyer. Heidi Cruz at second, one away, eighth inning. Dodgers three, Giants two. On deck, Jack Clark. Putin ready. Looks at Cruz. Works Dwyer. Swung on and missed. Strike two. Oh, and two. In the Dodger bullpen, left-hander Terry Forster, right-hander Charlie Hub. Bird delivers, swung on and missed, strike three. Four strikeouts for Bird Hooten, and now here is Jack Clark. The Boo Birds get on Clark because of the way he acted in the sixth inning. Jack grumbling to play on by a Paul Rungi on the first two pitches that were called strikes, then grounded into a double play and argued with first base umpire Andy Olson. He has walked and flied to left, so he's 0 for 2. The marvelous young right fielder, Jack Clark. So Bert Hooten has to get a big out, the toughest giant hitter in this spot. Bert delivers, and it's a ground ball to Russell. He's up with it. The long pull. Got him. No runs. One hit. One error. One left. And at the end of seven and a half, Dodgers three, Giants two. At Dave Fink's Union 76 station, you get a lot more than just gasoline. Like many Union 76 dealers, Dave offers certified service, so he can take care of almost any problem you have with your car. Now that's spirit. Go with the spirit, the spirit of 76. My guys here are constantly going to school. Things change so rapidly that you just got to stay up on top of this stuff, otherwise you can't fix a guy's car. I found, and it really pays off, that the customer has to know that he can come to you for every squeak and every problem and anything that goes wrong with the automobile. If you can only do certain things, then what really good are you? You can sell a whole lot of gasoline, and you can sell a whole lot of tires, you can sell a whole lot of batteries, but if you can't take the guy's car from stem to stern, and what service you've really done with the guy? We do it all here, you know, A to Z. I mean, there isn't too much we can't do with an automobile. Go with the service. Before we go to the last of the eight, let's pause for station identification. This is the Los Angeles Dodgers Radio Network.
Hi, this is Ross Porter. For complete coverage of the Los Angeles Dodgers, tune to 620 Radio, KTAR, Phoenix. In San Diego, after George Foster doubled in a run in the top of the ninth to give the Reds a one to nothing lead, Cincinnati loaded the bases. Raleigh Fingers came in with one out to replace Bob Ochenko, and he struck out Dan Dreesen for the second out of the inning. It appeared he was out of it, with Cincinnati relief pitcher Doug Bear coming to the plate, but Bear promptly singled in a run to make it two to nothing, and then Fingers struck out Joe Morgan to get out of the inning, but the Reds with two, and Bear will take the cushion to the bottom of the ninth inning. Ten years ago tonight, for the second time in his career, Boston Red Sox outfielder Reggie Smith did one home run left-handed and one home run right-handed. And can you believe it was nine years ago today that Don Drysdale announced his retirement from baseball for what he termed the good of the team. 1969 on the 11th day of August. Let's go to the bottom of the eighth. Dodgers three, Giants two. In the attendance figures tonight, this becomes the largest paid of the year. The previous high was in May, 52-562. Tonight, 52-869. So it's a big crowd. The Dodgers leading 3-2. And Bill North batting against Gary Lavelle. And the first pitch a little high. North struck out, fly to Santa, grounded out 0 for 3. Gary Lavelle is 9-8 and eight with the lead. In his 49th game, ERA a little over three. He has saved 11. The pitch to North, a strike, one and one. So Big Halicki, whose ERA lifetime against the Dodgers is two, goes out losing three to two tonight. One and one to Bill North. Lavelle back to his hitter, and that swung on and missed. Good fastball, one and two. Lavelle was struggling for a good part of the early year, but the slack was taken up by Randy Moffitt. One and two. Gary Reddy, left-hander delivers, and it's lifted to right field, but that's where Jack Clark hangs out. One away. By the way, don't go wandering off. When we go to the ninth inning, the Giants have Willie McCovey, Darrell Evans, and Terry Whitfield. All three left-hand batters. Then you have Roger Metzger, who bats left-handed. He's a switch hitter. And John Tamargo is switch hitter batting left-handed. So Hooten has a big assignment in the ninth inning. The chant begins now. Reggie, Reggie. He is grounded out, singled, and popped up. Fouls the first one back. Only four of Reggie's 22 home runs have come as a right-handed batter. Here's the strike one pitch fouled away, 0-2. But at the same time, he has had three times as many at-bats left-handed as right-handed. Reggie, the leading Dodger in RBIs against the Giants, he has 11 in 11 games. Of course, he got rich in a hurry last night with five. Strike two pitch is taken just outside, ball one, one and two. One out in the eighth, Dodgers three, Giants two. The one-two pitch on the way is taken, strike three on the corner. Actually, Reggie tried to hold up and couldn't do it. And now here's the difference in the game, Ron Say. Say had flied to left and popped to short. But in the sixth inning, he was able to take one of Halicki's pitches downtown as he cleared the center field fence to give the Dodgers a 3-2 lead. He fouls this one away, 0-1. Jim Dwyer came awfully close to catching the ball. Dwyer went to the wall, leaped high in the air. The only indication that you knew Say had hit the home run were the folks in the bleachers dancing in the aisles. The strike one pitch to Ron Say. Lavelle delivers breaking ball inside. One and one. One ball, one strike. Gary Lavelle running that pitch in after getting a fastball on the corner. One and one. Gary ready. And the one-one pitch. Fastball outside and low. Ball two. Two and one. 
The Dodgers three runs, six hits. The Giants two runs, five hits. Each side with an error. Neither error figured in the scoring. The 2-1 pitch. Grounded wide to third. Bad hop, and it hits Evans in the chest. Goes on the grass in left center, and Metzger retrieves. That ball just jumped up and took a bite out of Evans. It will naturally go as a base hit. So a bad hop single allows Garvey one last swing. Steve single scored in the second inning. Since then, fly to center, lined out to left. Garvey one for three. Ron Say held on by McCovey. Lavelle ready, left-handed deal, swung on and missed. Low fastball, foul tipped actually, 0-1. Well, it might be moving night. The Dodgers are hoping they can make a move into first place. Strike one pitch to Garvey, curve at his right ankle. One ball, one strike. Two out, bottom of the eighth. Dodgers three, Giants two. Lavelle in relief of Ed Holicki. The 1-1 pitch to Garvey, outside and high, ball two. Two and one. Big crowd staying right with us. Lavelle looks in to get a sign. Now checking, say. 2-1 pitch is lifted to center, but Jim Dwyer will handle it. He comes up to catch it, and that's it. No run to hit a man left, and at the end of eight... Dodgers three, Giants two. Bacon for breakfast. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? But how about bacon for dinner? Not nearly so familiar to be sure, but bacon is just as satisfying at the dinner table. And if it's labeled Farmer John Bacon, what with its extra rich flavor, just three or four strips should make a satisfying main meal serving. Yes, flavor is what Farmer John Bacon is all about. A unique and marvelous Western flavor that sets this bacon apart from all other brands. And as you're often reminded, it's the smoking that does it. For Farmer John smokes his bacon ever so unhurriedly with the aromatic smoke of our native western wood. And when he takes the bacon from his smokehouse, will of a wisp of sweet, savory smoke still clinging to it. The good western flavor reaches through and through the meat. No wonder this bacon has won so many gold medals at the California State Fair that Farmer John has almost lost count. Farmer John bacon, wonderful to wake up to and equally delicious for dinner. Get a package every time you shop. To the ninth inning at Dodger Stadium, 52,869 paid spectators in the house tonight, 54,252 at the stadium. And they've seen a good one, the Dodgers three and the Giants two. Meanwhile, they're in the bottom of the ninth at San Diego, the Reds leading the Padres two to nothing. But with two out on the bottom of the ninth, Rick Sweet has singled. And now Jerry Turner has come up and singled, and the Padres have the tying runs aboard with two on, two out. Let's go to the ninth here at Dodger Stadium. The big man leads off for San Francisco. They could be giving money away in San Diego for all they care here. Three to two Dodgers, ninth inning, and Willie McCovey at the plate. And for the rest of the world, it doesn't exist. Hooten on the rubber, into the windup. Bird delivers, swung on and missed, 0 and 1. Sooner or later, in most giant Dodger games, it gets down to the nitty-gritty, and we have arrived. The strike one pitch is a line drive, base hit into right center. So McCovey singles as Vida Blue runs up on the steps in front of the dugout to give a little cheer. We'll have a runner naturally for McCovey, Johnny Lee LeMaster. So McCovey will give way to LeMaster. So McCovey comes up with two big hits tonight. And LeMaster runs for him. Johnny LeMaster has stolen five bases, and he has been caught four times. He represents a tying run. And Tommy Lasorda going out to talk to Hooten. You have Darrell Evans, Terry Whitfield, and Roger Metzger. You don't expect Metzger to give way to a pinch hitter. He's too far down the line to even think about him. So Lasorda going out to talk to Hooten. And we will find out. Terry Forster and Charlie Hoffer down in the bullpen. Whatever Lasorda asked, the first thing Hooten did was nod his head yes. 
3-2 Dodgers. The Dodgers are also no doubt a little bit concerned. There is certainly no secret that Johnny Oates does not throw with Johnny Bench. And I think taking the thing into consideration, Lasorda wants a left-hand pitcher to go against Evans and Whitfield, but he also wants a left-hand pitcher to keep an eye on Johnny LeMaster. So he is going to Terry Forster. And Forster comes jogging in from the bullpen. So Bert Hooten goes eight. The tying run is aboard, so he's very much up in the air. We've got some time. Let's spend it with Ross. Okay, then it's all over in San Diego. Rookie Jim Beswick, a 20-year-old Pennsylvanian who made his major league debut here at Dodger Stadium earlier in the week, flied out for the final out of the ninth inning with two runners aboard. So Doug Bear and the Reds beat Bob Ochenko and the Padres tonight, two to nothing. You know, the Dodgers' next weekend series after this weekend will be a matchup with the Philadelphia Phillies. The Eastern Division leading Phillies arrive at Dodger Stadium for four games beginning Thursday night, August the 24th. The Dodgers and the Phillies battle again Friday night, August the 25th at 7.30, Saturday night, August the 26th at 7 o'clock, and Sunday, August the 27th at 1 o'clock. You won't want to miss the Dodgers and the Phillies in this big series. The fans get Bert Hooten an ovation. Forster, this is his fifth appearance against the Giants this year. He's won one, he's lost one, and he has saved two. In almost seven innings, the Giants have only one run off of Forster. And now, Darrell Evans waits for him as Terry begins and almost finishes his warm-up tosses. Of course, this was the head-on collision of Candlestick last week. Forster got the short end of that one. Evans drilled the base hit the right field to win the game. So, 3-2 Dodgers. Nobody out, a runner at first, and Forster just about ready to take on Darrell Evans. I guess you could say about Terry Forster that he's like the little girl with the curl. When he is good, he has been exceptional. And when he has not been good, he would just as soon not talk about it. Terry is three and four with the league. He is saved 14, ERA of two. And as the world knows, he throws very hard. However, when he throws his slider, it really tears up his left elbow. Darrell Evans coming up with LeMaster at first. Nobody out in the ninth. Dodgers three, Giants two. So the first of the big confrontations takes place right now. Evans with the bases loaded in the first inning sent Reggie Smith to the right field wall for his long out, driving in a run. Since then, he grounded out twice. Ron Say on the edge of the grass at third. Garvey holding the bag on LeMaster. And Forster hands it aside. Eyeballing LeMaster while now looking in to get a sign from Oates. Terry ready and off the rubber. And Darrell Evans backs out for the moment. Now he's back in. Terry nods yes. Out of a stretch. Looks at first. Now the left-hander deals, breaking ball inside at the knuckles. Ball one, one and oh, little slider. Evans checking with Dave Bristol. If you're wondering about Darrell Evans this year, he has bunted, he has sacrificed five times. Terry Ruddy and the 1-0 pitch on the way. Fastball bunted, foul, it bounced up and hit Evans on the left side of the face, but he's okay, one and one. Boy, that'll clear your sinuses in a hurry. One ball and one strike. So Evans bunting, fouled it off, one and one. You remember Madlock bunted, opening up the eighth inning, but fouled it out. All right, Devil, back into the plate. Terry Whitfield on deck. Foster, left foot on the rubber. LeMaster is short, lead at first. 3-2 Dodgers, ninth inning, nobody out. 1-1 one, one pitch on the way to Darrell Evans. Terry deals high, ball two. Evans had the bat out over the plate. That brought Garvey and Say in in a hurry. Two and one. Lance Rotson begins to throw in the Dodger bullpen. 
He's been up early, and now he's up late. Two and one to Evans. Forster ready and delivers, and the punt is made. Terry down to get it, has to throw to Garvey, so the sacrifice works. That is somewhat counterproductive to the years of baseball. It is against the so-called book. The book, wherever it is, tells you that you play to tie at home, and you play to win on the road. In other words, you're swinging away when you're on the road. But runs have been at a premium, and out to belly figuring, I can't win unless I first get tied, and he gives up an out to get close to it. Mike Ivey is now coming up to bat for Terry Whitfield. Ivey, as a pinch hitter, has done exceptionally well. Nine for 24, 16 RBIs, including three pinch hit home runs, two of them grand slammers. So no wonder they call him Poison. Ivy at the plate. Lemaster at second. Forster ready. Left-hander to the plate. Hard breaking ball for a strike. No balls and one strike. The count to Mike Ivy. Johnny Oates wigwagging a couple of signs out. Terry out of a stretch. The strike one pitch on the way. Fastball fouled away. 0-2. Oh one out in the ninth. Dodgers three, Giants two. Tomorrow night, Tommy John and Rob Nepper. And Sunday, Don Sutton and John Montefusco. 0-2 oh to pinch hitter Mike Ivey. Roger Metzger is on deck. Mark Hill, the catcher, is in the dugout, came in from the bullpen. The strike two pitch to Mike Ivey. Fast one in the dirt. Nice save by Johnny Oates. Ball one, one and two. Terry Whitfield had struck out, popped up and flied out against Hooten. So now out to belly goes the other way. Mike Ivey with the count one and two. Ivey batting 306 this year, seven home runs, 37 runs batted in. The one-two pitch. Terry Reddy checks LeMaster. Fast one, hit on two bounces into right field. Base hit, and here comes LeMaster to tie it up. So Terry Foster, who has been in and out ever since he hurt his arm, comes in and gives up the base hit to get the Giants even. And now, since they are even, Roger Metzger coming up. A 3-3 three, three tie. McCovey singled. Evans sacrificed. Lamaster ran for McCovey. And Ivy singled to right. Roger Metzger grounded out twice and flied to right. Forster out of his stretch. Terry looks at first. Fastball fouled away down the right field line out of play. 0-1 oh to Roger Metzger. So for Bert Hooten, a magnificent performance, but it goes down the drain. He has nothing to do with it. 0-1 oh to Roger Metzger. Forster at the stretch in the strike one pitch. Fastball fouled at the plate in the count 0-2. Mike Ivey at first is two for two in stolen bases. In case you are not keeping score, you wonder about the Dodgers in the bottom of the ninth. They are due to send up Dusty Baker, Johnny Oates, and Bill Russell. And that would be against left-handed Gary Lavelle. 0 oh and 2 the count. Foster delivers outside. Ball one. One and two. So Roger Metzger hitting right-handed in a 3-3 tie in the ninth. Terry reading Johnny Oates. Big left-handed kicks back with a breaking ball fouled away. A slider in on the hands. Still one and two. Boy, Mike Ivey is having a marvelous year, and particularly coming off the bench. As a pinch hitter, Ivey now has 17 runs batted in this year. That's remarkable. 17 RBIs as a pinch hitter. 
One and two the count to Roger Metzger. Foster set, here he comes, and that's fouled away. So Metzger making him work. Roger makes a lot of people work. He has struck out only 5% as a giant, 5% for the year. One ball and two strikes. Foster comes back one, two, and it's a little high, ball two. John Tamargo, switch hitting catcher on deck. Three, three in the ninth. As the Giants, with their backs to the wall, battle back to get even. Now Forster eyeballing Ivy. The 2-2 two -two pitch. Ivy goes. It's inside to throw on a bounce. It gets away from Lopes into center field. And Ivy goes all the way to third. told you that Johnny Oates does not throw very well and the one reason Forster was in there to keep an eye on a base runner and you certainly don't expect Ivy who is not fast by any means to be going but he goes and Oates throws on a bounce Lopes can't handle it and now a go ahead run is at third second Dodger error so three and two the infield must play up Ivy at third, one out, 3-3, three, three, top of the ninth. Forster ready, tough hitter. Forster delivers, and it swung on and missed. So he struck out a guy who strikes out 5% of the time. What a time to do it. Catcher. So two down, the infield goes back, and the catcher, John Tamargo, coming up. Tamargo, flied out, struck out, grounded out. Two down, ninth inning, 3-3. Three, three. Ivy at third. Foster can now go back to a windup, and Tamargo will hit right-handed. Terry looks over at Ivy. Rocks, turns, and the left-hander's first pitch in the dirt. A good save by Johnny Oates. Boy, you talk about the, the Stanley Cup winner and the goalkeeper. That's what Oates is right now, trying to block anything around the plate. Foster's 1-0 pitch to Tamargo is a high bouncer towards Russell to his left. He gloves it, throws, and gets him. However, the Giants get off the corner. One run, two hits, one error, a man left. The end of eight and a half, a 3-3 three, three tie. Talk about economy cars at Dutch. This is a dust storm alert. The Arizona Highway Patrol has reported blowing dust of varying intensity along Interstate 10 south of Phoenix and on Interstate 8 east of Gila Bend. If you observe dense dust blowing across or approaching the highway, do not enter the area. We suggest you pull off the pavement as far as possible and stop. Turn your lights off. Should you be engulfed by dense dust, do not stop on the pavement. If you are unable to pull off the pavement, we suggest you proceed at an appropriately reduced speed. Turn your lights on. Use the center line as a guide. Again, never stop on the pavement. Most dust storms last only a few minutes. If you have any doubt about the safety of driving conditions, pull off the pavement and wait for conditions to clear. This has been a dust storm alert. So it's 3-3. San Francisco makes some defensive changes. Jim Dwyer moves from center field to left field. Mike Ivey stays in the ball game, and he'll be at first base. And Larry Herndon takes over in center field. So Herndon, if you're keeping score with us, will bat fourth. Ivey in the number six slot, and Dwyer remains number two. So three runs, seven hits, two errors for the Dodgers. Three runs, seven hits, one error for the Giants. All even to the bottom of the ninth. Let's get back to Ben. Well, Dusty Baker will start it off. He was hit by a pitch and scored, but he's popped up twice since then. So Dusty 0 for 2. Gary Lavelle, even 3-3, three, three, and the fastball is high, ball one. Lavelle lifetime 0-2 with the Dodgers. The 1-0 pitch 
to Baker high ball two and this big crowd starting to make some noise again three three bottom of the ninth as you would expect the Giants and the Dodgers going right down to the wire the 2-0 pitch to Dusty Baker low ball three Joe Ferguson is on deck to bat for Johnny Oates three and oh to Dusty Lavelle ready and the pitch down the pipe three and one slowly begins again in the ballpark as they do for Reggie, only Dusty. The 3-1 pitch, a ground ball to short. Metzger gloves it, throws to Ivy low, but Mike digs it out, one away. So Dusty Baker taps to short, and now Joe Ferguson will bat for Johnny Oates. Oates single to drive in a run, flied out and grounded out, and now here's Fergie. Fergie has just one hit against the Giants and 14 at bat. He has had only one pinch hit appearance and he's 0 for 1. Lavelle ready and Gary delivers and it's a little dunker to center field. Metzger going out but it's going to fall. So Joe Ferguson a bloop single to center. And with one out in the ninth, Bill Russell, the batter. Boy, this big crowd loving every minute of it. Largest paid crowd of the year. As Lavelle out of his stretch in the pitch to Russell. Fastball away, ball one. 52,869 paid and over 54,000 in the house. The 1 0 pitch is a line drive backhanded by Metzger, taking a base hit away from Russell. Oh, Roger, you're magnificent. What a play. So, Roger Metzger, the very talented shortstop of the Giants, takes a base hit away from Bill Russell with a diving backhand catch. Lee Lacey is walking the length of the dugout and he will bat for Terry Forster. Lee Lacey coming up. So with one out, Ferguson gets a bloop single. And then Russell almost knocks the cover off the ball, and Metzger makes a magnificent play. So two down, ninth inning, 3-3, three, three, and Lee Lacey coming up. Lacey has been a very good pinch hitter. Maybe not quite as much as Mike Ivey, but he's 9 for 20 with seven runs batted in, and he has four pinch hit home runs. Lacey with two out and Ferguson at first. Three, three in the ninth. Charlie Huff in the Dodger bullpen. Randy Moffitt in the Giant pen. Lavelle ready the pitch to Lee. Swung on and missed. He challenged him right away with a fastball. The Giants led one to nothing. The Dodgers led two to one. The Dodgers led three to two. Giants caught him in the ninth. Lacey takes outside. One and one. One and one to Lee Lacey. Three, three, ninth inning, two out. Lee swings at a running fastball. Doesn't get it in the count one and two. So Lacey backs out. Ferguson standing just off the bag, held on by Mike Ivey. It was Ivey's base hit that drove in the tying run in the top of the ninth. After McCovey had single to center. One and two to Lacey. Lavelle delivers. Fastball hit over the mound, over second, into center field, base hit. And Ferguson, after thinking about it, decides to stop at second. And now you realize just how important that diving catch by Metzger was. Lacey's 
and hit as a pinch hitter. And the slump-ridden Davey Lopes, he has not been able to buy a hit. Wouldn't you know, he'll be coming up with the ball game on the line. Lopes has something like four hits in his last 32 at-bats. So he is in chains as he comes up to the plate. And Joe Altabelli is heading for the mound. And I don't think he's saving Randy Moffitt for the dance. He's going out to the mound. Ideally for Altabelli, it would be Lavelle to get the last out. Then you can bat for him since he leads off in the 10th. But naturally, you don't have the luxury of looking to the 10th inning unless you get the side out in the ninth. So that scrambles a little bit of the strategy. Al DeBelli will make the move. Randy Moffitt will come in for Gary Lavelle. Since John Tamargo made the last out, and since the pitcher spot is due up first, be there at 10th inning, it will be a two-for-one change. Mark Hill will take over for Tamargo and bat ninth. And Randy Moffitt will bat in Tamargo spot number eight. So while Lavelle goes out, we have some time. Let's spend it with Ross. So Randy Moffitt comes out of the San Francisco Randy bullpen. Moffitt, seven and four against the league with an ERA of 3.18. Randy has been in 52 games this year. He has been the workhorse of the Giants staff. This is the sixth game in which he's appeared against the Dodgers. He has won two lost none and has one save. Moffitt's lifetime is eight and four against the Dodgers. The Dodgers so far this year do not have a runoff of Randy Moffitt, so he's a tough one. And we remember a game here earlier in the year when Moffitt came in with the bases loaded in the ninth inning, the tie game, and on the first pitch he hit Bill Russell. And the Dodgers got the winning run home that way. Tonight, Ferguson is out at second, Lacey at first, two away. And Davey Lopes, who is 0 for 4, ready to come up and try to win it. 3-3 tie. The Reds have won their ballgame. So at this moment, in the National League West, three teams have identical records. 67 wins, 48 losses. It won't stay that way much longer. Okay, Ben. All right, Ross, the ball game is on the line. Randy Moffitt, who has been the stronger of the two men in the bullpen. He's had a better year than Gary Lavelle. Now he's asked to save Lavelle. And Davey Lopes, fighting the slump we've been telling you about at the plate. Davey has struck out twice, fly to left, and popped up. Moffitt ready. Randy delivers. Breaking ball outside. Joe Ferguson runs pretty well for a big man. And he is the winning run, and he's at second base. They are not putting a runner in for him. Lee Lacey at first. The 1 0 pitch to Lopes. Breaking ball away. Ball two. 2 and 0. Oh. Boy, this is when you're in your keep. Battling for first place, the middle of August. Two down in a tie ball game, bottom of the ninth. 2 and 0 oh to Davy. Moffitt out of a stretch. Randy delivers. Fastball low. Ball three. Here in the inning, Baker grounded out. Ferguson, a fly ball single. Then Russell lost a line drive. Here's the 3-0 pitch to Davey Lopes. Moffitt delivers a strike. Then Lee Lacey came up with his 10th hit in 21 at-bats as a pinch hitter. And with two on, two out, 3-3 three, three in the ninth, the count to Davey Lopes, three balls, one strike. Moffitt delivers. And it's a strike. Knee high, outside corner. In a sense, that is a break for the Dodgers. The crowd boos, but it's a break. Because with a full count, the runners will be going. And Ferguson might need the extra steps. Three and two to Davey Lopes. Moffitt ready. The runners go. And the pitch is ball four. think of in a spot like this it's 3-3 bottom of the ninth two out bases loaded Giants Dodgers and a big crowd going crazy I tell you what I think of there is a car somewhere in Southern California driving on a freeway 
and there is a wife saying to her husband, you had to leave early to beat the crowd. I guarantee you that's happening somewhere tonight. All right, Bill North with the bases loaded, two out in the ninth, 3-3. Three, three. Moffitt delivers. Low, ball one. North has struck out, fly to center, grounded out and fly to right. Easy on the nerves now. Remember what we told you at the start of tonight. It is only August 11th. Here's the 1-0 pitch to North. In there, one and one. I mean, we need you for the dog days in September. Don't let this one shrivel you up. One and one to Bill North. Mop it out of a windup, and the pitch to North. Low, ball two. The winning run, 90 feet away, and Joe Ferguson. Lee Lacy at second. Davey Lopes at first. Two and one to Bill North. Randy Moppet from the first base side of the rubber into the windup. 2-1 pitch. Low, ball three. And this big crowd now ready to cut loose. A lot of the folks are on their feet and hollering. You talk about pressure. Listen to this place. The 3-1 pitch is ball four. Dodgers win it four to three. had gotten an 11 hour reprieve in the top of the ninth only to see the Dodgers win not only knock the Giants out of first place they take a tumble to third 4-9-2 for the Dodgers 3-7-1 for the Giants Foster winds up getting the victory and Gary Lavelle suffers the defeat holy mackerel what a night and the Dodgers are in first place leading the Reds by half a game Tomorrow night, Tommy John and Rob Never. Once again, the final score, Dodgers 4, Giants 3. Incorporated by Farmer John Meat Products and KTAR Sports Radio. Listen for Dave Tunnell reporting on sports each weekday morning, Bill Nixon with interviews, and George Allen on 620 Sports Line each evening here on KTAR.
Angeles Dodgers postgame show is brought to you by KTAR, your news and sports voice for Phoenix and the Grand Canyon State. For up-to-the-minute news and sports information from around the state and around the world, 24 hours a day, listen to KTAR 620. For the first time in three months, the Los Angeles Dodgers are in undisputed possession of first place. They stretch their winning string to seven games tonight, winning a thriller 4-3 to three from the Giants. So the Dodgers now on top of both Cincinnati and San Francisco. Bird Hooten helped them get there tonight with some strong pitching. The Giants had a chance to blow this one open in the first inning tonight, loading the bases with nobody out against Bird Hooten. But Bird allowed just one run in the first inning. He retired 15 men in a row at one stretch in the ballgame, and he came within two outs of his 13th victory. He's our guest. I'm sure he had to sweat the moments out in the training room of the Dodgers before it was over, but the Dodgers went at 4-3. to three. They're in first place. Let's meet Bert and go to Jerry. Okay, Ross. Well, Bert, I know the first thing he had to sweat out was the drive by Evans in the first inning. Looked for a minute like he had a chance to hit it all away. The only thing I was worried about, Jerry, is uh, usually at that time of the evening, the ball carries a little bit better than uh, when it's a little bit later on. Uh, I felt like uh, he had gotten the ball on the end of the bat. I didn't feel like when he hit it, it was going out. But uh, then again, I started thinking about the way the ball carries around 7.30 to 8 o'clock around here. And it carries well uh, to all parts of the field. But uh, fortunately enough, uh, he didn't get it all. Now you got to, after that, you were settled down and had 15 men in a row running through there. So you really had the Giants going pretty well. I was throwing good strikes, uh, good pitches uh, right on the corners of the plate. Uh, keep the ball down well. And... Uh, I wasn't giving them a whole lot to hit. They had a couple of balls hit hard, and we had a couple of great plays uh, that were made behind me. Uh, uh, Penguin made one on Halicki. Uh, North made one on Dwyer. And, uh, uh, of course, uh, they turned the double play, I think, in the uh, what, sixth inning uh, to get me out of a, a tough jam uh, uh, when I gave up the hit to McCovey to give up the run. But uh, to get out of that jam uh, with Clark and McCovey and Evans coming up out of only one run... Uh, to keep us in the ball game, but I feel really fortunate. That was a big play as you got Clark to hit in the double play because he's one of the toughest hitters going. That's right. Well, I've, I've had, uh, as far as I can remember, pretty good success against Jack. Uh, you know, he's a tough out. He's not an easy easy guy to pitch to, but uh, uh, he's the type of guy you make a mistake on and he'll hurt you. So uh, you got to make good pitches on it. Bert, you had to go into the locker room in the ninth inning and kind of sweat it out back there in the training room. Uh, what uh, kind of thoughts do you have as you listen to the ball game there and things are going on and they're just not uh, maybe going to get away from you? Well, first of all, they came out and got me after uh, McCovey got the base hit in the uh, top of the ninth. And I, I feel he'd already made up his mind as to whether or not to take me out when he came out there. But he came out and asked me how I feel, and I did feel fine. But then again, I, I'm thinking along his lines, and he says, let's bring the left-hander in and pitch to these left-handers and uh, it's not a situation where you, you really want to come out of the game but sometimes you, you got to use your head a little bit and with a guy like Forster down in our bullpen and two left-handers coming up it's a uh, you know it's a logical situation to bring him in so uh, I wasn't that upset and then uh, we get in the clubhouse and uh, I've, you know, I watched Darrell Evans bunt uh, and you know it's unheard of for the visiting team to uh, play for a tie at uh, at another ballpark, so uh, I figured, well, if I knew Evans was going to bunt, I, I would have, you know, challenged him a little bit more and wanted to stay in there, but uh, those things you never can can tell. Now, the bottom of the ninth inning, the Dodgers are threatening, and here comes Billy North to bat. I know you're pacing up and down, hoping that Billy does something. Well, I just wanted to hope he'd get a good pitch to hit. Of course, uh, Billy's pretty good at laying the bat on the ball, but, uh, you know, any way you can win a ball game, uh, you got to feel a little for Randy Moffitt. Uh, I, I know how he feels after my performance in Philadelphia last year in the playoffs uh, as far as walking in runs, but uh, uh, Billy has a good eye, and uh, he uh, evidently hung tough in there against him and uh, was going to make him throw him a good pitch, and uh, obviously Randy didn't want to give him a good pitch to hit, and that was it, and that was it. Bert, thanks for the visit. Congratulations on a strong effort. Thank you, Jerry. Bert Hooten has been our guest.